from the Committee on Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship to order. Uh, at this point, let me acknowledge the name, the presence uh, of. Uh, may I acknowledge the presence of Senator uh, Bongo, Senator uh, Bato, de, Senator De La Rosa, and uh, Senator Angara. With uh, and also, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of the. Uh, committee vice chairs, uh, Senator Nancy B Senator Nancy Bina and Senator Rafi Tulfo, and also of course our DTI secretary, uh, uh, DTI secretary Fred Pasqual. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. With the with the presence of the senators, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. May I ask the committee secretary to acknowledge our guests and resource persons attending physically or virtually today? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, everyone. I would like to acknowledge the presence of our resource persons who are with us uh, virtually. From the Department of Trade and Industry, we have uh, Secretary Alfredo Pascual. Together with him, we have ASEC Glenn Peñaranda, ASEC Dominic Tolentino, Attorney Marco Maat, Mr. Dane Palencia, Ms. Susan May Salonga, Ms. Ramona Ann Ortiz, Ms. Carla Santos, and Ms. Wea Bohol. From the UP College of Law, we have uh, Ms. Ophelia Liano, Police Officer. From the University of the Philippines Law Center, we have Attorney Oliver C. Reyes. From Lazada eServices Philippines, we have Attorney Kaila Garcia and Mr. Norman Ocana III. From the Citizen Watch Philippines, we have Mr. Leandro Salud. From Nationwide Association of Consumers Incorporated, we have the President, Mr. Jose Pepito. From Shopee, we have uh, Attorney uh, Jem Han Segovia. From ANCAS, we have uh, the CEO, Mr. George Royeka. From Lalamove, we have the Head of Regulatory and Strategy, we have Attorney Joy. Caneba. From SM Supermos, we have Miss Maria Tala Exconde and Miss Helene Go. From GCAS, we have the advocacy lawyer, Mr. Mark Anthony Morao. We have Miranda Lee Hines, Mr. Adrian Alexander Romualdez, Mr. Jose Maria Antonio Mercado, Miss Rowena Zamora. Mr. Ferdi Perez, and Ms. Joan Avendano. From Secure Connections, we have uh, Ms. Liel Pascual and Dr. William Yu. That's all, Mr. Chair, for now. I would like to officially manifest uh, the members of the Committee on Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship for the record. Aside from this representation as chairperson of the committee, the members comprising the Committee on Trade, uh, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship nominated by the Senate in plenary last August 10, 2022 are the following. For vice, chair, for vice chairperson, Senator Nancy Binay and Senator Rafi Tulfo. On the part of the majority, Senator J.V. Ejercito, our Deputy Majority Leader, Sen Senator Cynthia Villar, Senator Ronald De La Rosa, Senator Sherwin Gachalian, Senator Pia Cayetano, and Senator Christopher Lawrence Go. On the part of minority, uh, Senator Risa Ontiveros, I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Sen Senator Wynn Gachalian. The jurisdiction of this committee is found in Rule 10, Section 13 of the Rules of the Senate, which read, all matters pertaining to domestic and foreign trade and private corporations, micro, small, and medium business enterprises, 
social enterprises, the promotion of entrepreneurship, and the regulation of entrepreneurial practice, patents, copyrights, trade names, and trademarks, standards, weights, measures, and designs, quality control, uh, quality control, control and stabilization of prices of commodities, consumer protection, handicrafts and cottage industries, and marketing of commodities. At this juncture, I move to adopt the pertinent provisions of the rules of the Senate and the rules of procedure governing inquiries in aid of legislation to be adopted as the rules of this committee. Do we hear any objections? There being none, the motion is carried. Uh, for, for today's hearing, we will discuss the following agenda. The status of the trade and industry in the Philippines, which, we, which will be presented by the DTI, the well, priority legislative agenda of the DTI, and the legislative measures on internet transactions. So, without further ado, I would like to welcome the DTI to provide a brief overview of the state of the trade and industry in the Philippines, as well as the department's top legislative priorities. Uh, the presentation will be composed of uh, five parts. The first one, which is the latest economic indicators. The second is the external trade relations, and then we go to Philippine industrial strategy, the Philippine micro, small and medium enterprises, and then consumer protection. So we'll just present the latest economic indicators. Next slide, please. The reopening of our economy has immediately translated to recovery in all the economic data. The Philippine GDP posted a full year GDP growth rate of 5.7% in 2021, surpassing the government top target of 5 to 5.5% growth. This growth is among the highest GDP growth rates in ASEAN and the East Asian region. On the production side, the industry sector expanded by 8.5% in 2021, while the services sector grew by 5.4%. On the expenditure side, household consumption grew by 4.2%, which points to improving consumer confidence. For 2022, our target GDP growth is 6 to 7%, which takes us back on track to our 2019 pre-pandemic level of 19.38 trillion pesos. This year, we just need a minimum of 4.56% growth to restore to 2019 pre-pandemic levels. According to the latest estimates of the PSA, our GDP growth reached 7.8% during the first semester of 2022. Next slide. The Purchasing Managers Index in indicates the overall health of an economy where an index about 50% about 50 indicates an expansion, while an index below 50 implies contraction. In the latest report of the IHS market, the Philippine marketing sector ended 2021 with a nine-month high Purchasing Managers Index of 51.8 in December, following month-on-month -month output uh, unseen in previous months. In December 2021, we ranked third in ASEAN, coming after Indonesia and Malaysia. Next slide. Uh, before you continue, I'd just like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Pia Cayetano. And, uh, please proceed. Uh, next slide, so uh, merchandising exports. Our merchandising exports closed 2021 with a 14.42% growth with value reaching 74.6 billion US dollars based on data from the PSA. 74.6 billion is even higher by 5.22% than 
and then the 2019 pre-pandemic level of 17.9 billion. Notably, 27 exported commodity groups covering 87.8% of total exports reached pre-pandemic yeah. export levels. Next slide, in the first half of 2022, our merchandising exports reach close to 7% growth with a value reaching $38.5 billion based on preliminary data from the PSA. This is 11.27% higher than the export value in the same period in 2019, which was set at $34.6 billion. Although total tilting trade had been increasing since 2010, except in, the, in 2020 due to the pandemic, the total balance of trade remains negative since 2001. In 2021, a total trade reached $192.53 billion, but with imports reaching $117.88 billion, the country registered a $43.23 billion deficit. As of June this year, we have recorded a deficit of $29.79 billion. On the investment side, foreign investors continue to stand by the Philippines and invest in mid to long term strategic projects, even in the middle of a health crisis. Our Banco Central recorded $10.52 billion US dollars total net foreign direct investments in 2021, higher by 54.42% than the $6.8 billion net inflows in the same period in 2020. Equity capital placements were sourced mainly from Singapore, Japan, the United States, and the Netherlands. These were channeled mainly to the industries of manufacturing, electricity, gas, steam, and air conditioning, financial and insurance, and real estate. In terms of employment, the National Employment Recovery Strategy Task Force, or NERSE TF, which is chaired by the DTI, has taken steps to ensure that jobs are preserved and rampant unemployment is prevented in 2021. Based on the June 2022 labor force survey, the country's employment rate reached 94%, or equivalent to 46.6 billion employed persons. An increase of 508,000 employed persons was observed month on month from May to June, which can be attributed to the sustained easing of alert levels nationwide. This was complemented by the increase in capacity of commercial establishments, including resorts and restaurants, 200%. This is to welcome development in bringing back the confidence of both the businesses and the consumers, which is one of the nurse outcomes. The average unemployment rate for 2022 is 6%, which is still higher than the pre-pandemic level of 5 to 5.5%. However, this is already a decline from the high 17.6% unemployment that we witnessed in April 2020. Moving forward, we shall continue to pursue the goal of pushing unemployment back to pre-pandemic levels. It is worth mentioning too that in June 2022, some of the sectors have managed to bounce back better to pre-pandemic levels. This includes agriculture, uh, up to up by 1.77 million, or rounded up to 1.8 million. Wholesale and retail trade up by 1.13 million, and administrative and support service activities up by 1 million. Overall, the number of employed the number of employed has increased by 4.05 million from January 2020 to June 2022. The next slide is on inflation. The Philippines annual headline inflation continued its uptrend as it moved further to 6.4% in July 2022, from 6.1% the month prior. This is the highest recorded inflation since October 2018. With this month's inflation, the Philippines average inflation from January to July 2022 is 4.7%. The main source of the upward trend was the higher annual growth rate in the index for food and non-alcoholic beverages at 6.9%. Nonetheless, business and consumer sentiment are still improving. Next slide. A 
according to the Bank of Central, business, business sentiment in, in second quarter 2022 improves and the overall confidence index increased to 35.4% from 32.9% in, in, in the first quarter. The higher positive index resulted from the combined effects of an increase in the percentage of optimists and an increase in the percentage of pessimists. The respondents' more buoyant outlook was attributed to the easing of COVID-19 restrictions, the reopening of the economy and the return to normal business operations, increase in sales orders and demand, and the uptick in economic activities due to election-related spending. The consumer sentiment in the country, on the other hand, was less pessimistic in quarter two, as the overall consumer confidence index improved to negative 5.2% from a negative 15.1% in the first quarter. The higher index, albeit remaining negative, indicates the number of households with optimistic views increased. Although still less than with those with pessimistic views. According to respondents, their improved outlook was brought about by the expectations of the availability of more jobs and permanent employment, positive developments related to the COVID-19 situation and easing of travel and social gathering restrictions, and additional and high income. Chair, uh, that is all for the latest economic indicators. The next slides are on external trade relations to be presented by Under Secretary. Thank you. Uh, can I just, uh, I'd just like to clarify uh, the earlier slide about inflation. So the main drivers at this point are the rise. Can I, is it uh, correct to say that the main drivers of uh, inflation, which is at 6.4% are the increase in, uh, you said uh, mostly food and uh, non, non-alcoholic beverages? That's correct. Uh, so that that's also somehow in, intertwined with the uh, rise in, I suppose, sugar, because those are not, my, I suppose. Yes, sir. I see. What in particular? What food? Um, when you when you say food, is there a particular uh, industry that's part that was uh, that's experiencing a high rate of uh, uh, inflation? What's your problem, please? Pork, beef, chicken, vegetables. Pork, ugly, and um, that's a consumer basket. I'm sorry. I, sorry, I didn't catch that. Sorry, could, could you speak uh, louder? Sorry. Yes, Mr. Chair. I understand that the commodities included in the consumer basket are mostly agricultural products, none of the none of the manufacturing food products, Mr. Chair. So non manufactured so non manufactured those are the ones that are know, that are experiencing the highest rate of uh, increase. Yes, Mr. Chair. Exactly. Well, of course, which is non food, sir. And, and to what do do you attribute that to? Uh, what factors do you attribute that to? It's is it more external? Yeah. Basically, no local production, Mr. Chairman. Not it's any not local fact. Not any internal factors. You're saying it's mostly external. Well, uh, in, in local manufacturing, Mr. Chair, that would, of course, include logistics that causes the increase of prices of uh, agricultural products, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you. Chairman, just in correction with your question. Um, yes, go, go ahead, uh, Senator Caetano. Thank you. Could we just ask for a, can they, can they actually show us a slide uh, if possible so we can take a quick look now? Um, but also submit to us, um, do they have the actual price increases per commodity that they have been referring to? So these are basically non-manufactured. No, they have a price list. So if they say it's pork, pork, can we see the price increases over the same period of time of the inflation? So we can really have a better understanding. Yes. Yeah, the, the breakdown will be available from PSA and the of course, can obtain uh, this uh, breakdown. It's a DPI that monitors these uh, items. I know you mo- you monitor it, right? That's why I'm asking for it. Because you have monitor, right? Is it rice and pork, sir? All other agricultural products are not monitored. Sorry, say that again. Uh, except for pork and uh, rice, Mr. Chairman. 
uh, we do not monitor all other agricultural products. No. Okay, but, but the other pro but whatever you monitor, sana mo pakita niyo rin kasi you gave us a general statement, no? You uh, your your statement was general to the chairman na uh, uh non-manufacturing ang tumaas. So I just want to see that to validate that. Uh, we have data for manufactured food products, uh Mr. Chair. Uh, prices and rates of increases of manufactured food products that are under the jurisdiction of PPI. We, we can show that now, or we can submit it uh, later within the day. It's Department of Agriculture, isn't it? Because it's monitoring the agri, agri products prices are monitored by the Department of Agriculture. Um, show us what you have. What we have are uh, the prices uh, of uh, manufactured products such as uh, sardines, milk, uh, corned beef, yeah. and the like. Yes, I understand. What I wanted to do is I wanted to superimpose it on the inflation chart. So okay. that's why I wanted to see those. If if you don't have if if you have it if you have a chart that shows the increase, that would be very helpful. But I I won't disrupt your presentation. You can show it later. But I think it's it's I, I still want to see it now at some point. But you can go ahead with your presentation. But I want to see what you have. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Perhaps uh, after that, maybe while they're presenting the next part, we can uh, prepare a slide uh, as per uh, Senator Cayetano. And uh, I'd also like to recognize uh, the presence of Senator uh, Pimentel. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question on that in, on the inflation? Uh, Slide. Yes, please. Uh, please proceed, uh, Senator. Uh, I will limit myself. Just lang po sa inflation. Uh, does the does or can the our SRP system uh, play a role in controlling or influencing inflation? Meron kasi tayo SRP, so I need to ask the uh, the the opinion of the DTI, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Somehow, Mr. Chair, it can uh, contribute to lowering inflation if the suggested retail prices of agricultural products are strictly enforced, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, you, so the, the, weight, the weight of products which are covered by DTI's SRP system in the basket of goods where inflation is computed is very small if they figure at all mr chair ano no again ano sa god if they at all figure in the consumer basket mr chair uh, do we do we not know if there are goods in the consumer basket which are under srp of the dti uh there is no uh no item in the consumer basket, Mr. Chair, that is manufactured and therefore not monitored by DPI. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, so that's clear. So uh, that means that theoretically speaking, the official inflation rate will never and can never be influenced by the SRP system because none of the goods under SRP are included in the basket of goods where where uh, CPI or inflation is uh, computed. So thank you. Thank you for that uh, clarification, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, thank you. And uh, please, uh, please proceed. M Mr. Chairman. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, uh, the chair recognizes uh, Senator Gachalian. On, on the topic of inflation, may I uh, know, if not now, maybe later on, I've been reading a lot of news about um, what's happening with the sugar industry. And it seems to me there's a spillover effect um, regarding spillover effect from the shortage of sugar to consumer products and uh, consumer items. For example, I, I saw in the news report that prices of sago, prices of soft drinks, prices of uh, this type of consumer products are either in shortage or prices are going up. Uh, do we have any slide or any information from DTI how the problems in the sugar industry is spilling over to consumer products and what effects are our consumers uh, feeling from this uh, sugar um, issue? Where's the consumer basket? 
The commodities included in the consumer price index include food and non alcoholic beverages, alcoholic beverages and tobacco, clothing and footwear, housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels, furnishing, household equipment, health, transport, communication, recreation, culture, education, restaurant and today use goods and services. So the manufactured food items are, uh, as explained earlier, not included in the consumer basket for purposes of determining the consumer price index. The biggest component, of course, is uh, food and non-alcoholic beverages. Uh, when I think food here refers to uh, uh, non-manufactured food items like rice, uh, vegetables and the like. Okay, prepare a slide on this. Yeah, we will try to, to prepare a slide that we can show later on how the various components affect the consumer price index. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Senator Wynn, do you have any other question, a follow-up question? or? Huh? Um, Mr. Chairman, my question actually is related to the... Well, let me repeat my question. Um, uh, we've been hearing a lot about the issues with sugar supply. And uh, I'm just, uh, uh, I just want to get information from DTI whether these problems with sugar supply is already impacting or already affecting uh, consumer products. Uh, for example, I, I saw in a news report that uh, there's already uh, some impact on this, the 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 um, for sago and gulaman because a lot of the vendors use sugar to sell that. There's also some uh, some effect on soft drinks and the prices of soft drinks. So I just want to know from DTA how the sugar problem is already affecting consumer items. In short whether positively or negatively. Senator Vinci, you said, from the representations that we've been receiving from the industries that are producing non-alcoholic beverages, sabi kayo na soft drinks, isang uh, malaking, pinakamalaking user so ng premium sugar. Tapos so, yung ating mga, uh, yung nabag, mga nabagit niyo, yung mga sa pastries, sa bake shops, na nararamdaman na rin po. We, we, we can have the uh, exact figures uh, sent to your office and to this committee, Senator. But yes, nararamdaman na po. Yeah, yeah Yusek, um, paano na lang, uh, if we can, for example, paste, like for example, uh, Ensaymada, no? may sugar yan eh. So I don't know how the shortage and the spike in sugar prices is affecting the price of Ensaymada. No? In short, no? in short. So... Later on, along um, through another presentation or a, a briefer, to send the committee how that problem in the sugar industry is already affecting consumer products. Yes, Senator, pati ho yung 3 in 1 coffee, which is almost sugar. Ho, yung correct, lang. correct. Yun na nga, yung tang, yung mga tang, yung mga juice drinks, puro sugar yan. Eh. It's almost 90% sugar. So uh, I don't know if it's already increasing the price at retail uh, of all these products. We we'll send you and to the committee. Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, the, uh, before we proceed, I'd like to recognize uh, uh, Senator Tulfo, who's also a uh, vice chair of this committee. Uh, let's uh, please proceed, uh, Senator uh, De La Rosa. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Kunting uh, lang, Mr. Chair, I just, want, I just would like to be educated. No? Uh, based on my little knowledge on uh, uh, of economics 101, uh, still on the topic of inflation, there are uh, three types of uh, inflation. This is the demand pull, the cost push, and the built-in inflation. Gusto ko lang malaman, what kind of inflation, inflation are we facing right now, Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair, it's mainly cost push. 
pushed, pushed. Yes, because of the increases in uh, prices of uh, inputs like uh, fuel, like uh, uh, sugar. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Salamat, salamat. Yes, uh, thank you very much, and uh, we look forward to getting that information. I think. Uh, to, uh, the statement that the uh, non-alcoholic beverages is one of the main major drivers of inflation is interesting because we would like to the the committee would also like to see what to what extent is the effect of this whole uh, sugar price issue. So uh, I yes I agree with uh, Senator Gachalian that I hope we we look forward to uh, getting that information uh, at the, as soon as possible. Time. Thank you very much. And uh, at this point, we can proceed with our presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, to Chair Senator Mark Villar and the other members, honorable Senator members of the Committee of uh, Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship. So, very brief now on external, inter external trade relations. Uh, next slide, please. This slide will show to you the whole range of uh, economic relationships that we have. Of course, what, starting with the WTO, World Trade Organization, at the multilateral level. Tapos so yung APEC at the regional level. Tapos so yung ating mga, yung ating uh, ASEAN free trade agreement and free trade agreements through the ASEAN. Of which we have uh, six. Yung through the ASEAN po natin is China, Japan, South Korea, uh, India, Australia, New Zealand. Tapos meron din pong separate pa na ASEAN, uh, Hong Kong uh, FDA. Pagkatapos, so, yung bilateral FTAs natin is really with Japan, which entered in late 2008. Tapos, so, with the EFTA countries or European Free Trade uh, Agreement uh, members that would be with Switzerland, Iceland, Norway, and Liechtenstein. In the works, so, uh, hopefully, to be signed by the Secretary this November, would be the Philippine FTA. Next slide. Uh, tapos so this slide will show to you yung ating mga major export markets. Pinakamalaki yung as an export market, as a trade market for the Philippines, would be China, 20%. But China together with Hong Kong would be 20%. And it is followed by uh, ASEAN, 23%. And then Japan, 11%. US, 10%. EU, 8%. South Korea, 6%. And Taiwan, uh, uh, next slide. So sa next slide, pinapakita lang natin, ano yung share ng mga bansa na FTA partners na natin versus yung sa share ng mga bansa na wala pa tayong FTA. Yung mga nabanggit natin kanina na FTA partners na natin, we would account for about 65% of our exports. Pero ang kailangan din po natin i sa mga non-FTA partners ka mukha akong panimbawa ni EU and the uh, US, meron naman po tayong GSP or Generalized System of Reference dito sa mga bansa na ito na nakakapasok tayo ng uh, mababa yung talipa if not zero ka mukha akong panimbawa sa EU to the EU GSP, GSP plus. So taken together, mga 26% po yung mga GSP uh, member uh, market po natin plus the 65% so, malaking malaki na po yung FTA markets plus the GSP markets. Uh, ito, pinapakita lang po dito sa slide na to kung ano-ano yung mga produkto na nakakapasok halimbawa dun sa US GSP at sa EU GSP na, uh, na under preferential rates kahit wala tayong FTA with these countries. Of course, it's always better for us to have a uh, an FTA with the US or with the EU, for example, para hindi po unilateral on their part and para may continuity. Kasi magka-graduate din po tayo dito sa mga GSP. Pagka na-reach na natin yung uh, higher middle income level po na for capita income. Next slide. Now, like this. Another important component po itong ating uh, external uh, engagements aside from the FTAs would be tinatawag natin na joint economic cooperation. Ito po yung bilateral platform by which the Philippines is able to discuss with another country kung ano yung mga issues that we are faced with respect to trade, 
investments, and all other economic issues, mas collaborative po and co co cooperative yung pagdating sa discussions through the JEC. And meron po tayong 33 JECs today. Kaya lang po, hindi ko lahat yung ng mga JECs natin ay uh, active. Itong susunod doon ng mga slides natin will show to you which of the JECs are uh, are more active. Next slide. So for example, lo, ito yung mga slides na uh, ito yung mga bansa na makikita nyo sa slide natin. May mga inactive kamukha ko nung kay Bangladesh, Kuwait, uh, uh, Qatar, at saka sa Iraq. Tapos yung mga bansa naman na China, Japan, South Korea, uh, etc. Mas active po yung mga yan. Ibig sabihin ho, nag-meet ko tayo ng mga bansa na yan. Punti uh, ko every year, uh, once every two years. Next slide. Uh, sorry, i-highlight ko lang ho, pakibalik. Doon ho sa India, for example, uh, i-highlight ko lang ho na right after mag-withdraw si India from the RCEP, ang naging strategy ho natin is to quickly uh, con uh, convene the Joint Working Group on Trade and Investment at saka nag-propose ho tayo kung pwede tayo yung mag-preferential trade agreement with India noting na wala na sila doon sa RCEP. Pumayag naman mo sila na explore yun. Uh, next slide. So aside from these countries, this next slide would also show to you kung ano pa ho yung mga bansa na meron tayo JEC or equivalent. So, yan ako, nandiyan ho ang US, Chile, Canada, the EU. Uh, next slide. Uh, before you proceed, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of, uh, the, the presence of uh, Senator Amy Marcos. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Senator, and good morning, Senator Amy Marcos. Uh, the next slide would, uh, again, continuing on, ito ho yung mga bansa na may JEC tayo, including EFTA, Russia, France, uh, yeah, no. Tapos, so next slide, si Switzerland, Germany, and si Turkey. So those are the 33 countries with which we have uh, uh, JECs. Uh, next slide. This next slide na mano would show to you yung ating mga uh, ex, uh, work in progress. Ano po yung nangyayari dun sa mga pinandit natin mga FTAs kanina at saka ano yung mga uh, currently that we are negotiating. Nabanggito natin kanina that we already have the PJEPA, the Philippines-Japan Economic Partnership Agreement, which we signed in December 2008. Ang maganda ho dito, halimbawa, sa PJEPA, three years after we have signed it, yung ating kong trade surplus with Japan have increased from just about $0.4 billion to $1.8 billion in the first three years of its, uh, of its uh, implementation. Or going ko yung renegotiation dito at ang ating mga offensive interest pagdating ko dito are the products that you see on the slides. So for example, may agricultural products so yung mga nandito. Tapos so, nabanggit din natin that the other bilateral agreement that we have is with the Philippines, with the, with the European Free Trade Association. Uh, it entered into force late 2018 dito. And on, on its first full year of implementation, the reverse ho natin yung trade deficit natin, perennial trade deficit that we have been experiencing with Switzerland. And yun hong ating trade surplus ngayon with the EFTA countries are continuing. Banggitin ko lang ho yung mga products that have contributed kasi nakakuha ho tayo dito ng concessions from the EFTA countries pagdating sa pagbaliklad pag, uh, ng ating dating trade deficit with them. So halimbawa ho, vacuum cleaners, so si Dyson, the uh, Dyson uh, vacuum cleaners that are being produced here in the Philippines, assembled here in the Philippines, malaking contribution mo siya sa exports natin to uh, EFTA countries. And not just to EFTA countries, but even to EU, US, yung mga developed countries. Uh, other items, so electrical apparatus, uh, tires, yung mga sa ating mga motor vehicles, yung mga galing kay Yokohama, tapos so uh, hair dryers and wristwatches. Yun yung sa mga industrial products. Pagdating sa agricultural products, this would be uh, desiccated coconuts, tropical fruit juices, canned tuna, fruit preparations, and tropical uh, nuts. Uh, and ongoing din sa ating mga uh, trade agreements would be yung uh, upgrade ng mga ASEAN plus one FTAs that we currently have, particularly in China, Korea, India. Next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, Yung isa ho that uh, we are even requesting a uh, strong uh, collaboration with the Senate uh, would be for the RCEP uh, concurrence of the Senate to the uh, executive ratification. 
Uh, we are also coordinating Narito with the committee being chaired by Senator Aimee Marcus for this. Tapos so, nabanggit natin kanina yung Philippine South Korea free trade agreement. Hopefully the Secretary, Secretary Pascual can sign it in November na sa legal scrapping stage na po tayo dito. Uh, next slide. Uh, hopefully po yung ating Philippines EUFTA would resume its negotiations. We were able to uh, have a successful two rounds of trade negotiations. Uh, kaya lang po na tigil po ito during the last administration. Tapos so yung ASEAN as a whole have all, has also uh, decided to uh, commence the negotiations with Canada for an ASEAN Canada FTA agreement. Meron din po tayong uh, CPTPP, yung Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for the TPP Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, ito po yung 12 countries pero umalis po si US dito sa TPP, kaya naging CPTPP siya. Uh, but the UK is already in the process of joining the CPTPP. So we have commissioned the study to look into uh, our participation in the CPTPP. And the latest po natin that we are working on would be the US-led Indo-Pacific Economic Framework. Maganda ko itong framework na to, although very general pa yung mga usapan, as it covers four areas or four pillars that would include trade, supply chains, so yung mga issue, halimbawa, ng kinakapos ng mga IC products, uh, pag-uusapan mo dito sa supply chain uh, pillar. Clean economy, including mo yung transition na asset natin from fossil fuel base to renewable energy uh, power sources, tapos so very economy. Uh, the U.S. would like to conclude negotiations within the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, that is all for now, uh, uh, sa Senators uh, and the members of the Committee. Thank you, sir. If there are no questions from the committee members, we will proceed with the presentation on the... Chair, Mr. Chair? Hello, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, yes, uh, Senator Tulfoy, uh, you are recognized. First of all, Mr. Chair, I uh, would like to congratulate you for having been given the uh, committee chairmanship, Trade and Commerce and Enterprise, or entrepreneurship. Um, I'll take this opportunity to ask this question sa mga taga DTI because uh, for so many years, Naging maila po ang DTI sa mga tanong na binabato ko sa kanila every time I get uh, complaints from people that come to my action center to complain for the past several years. Ang aking pong question, palagi na iniiwas-iwasan po ng DTI, ay ano pong ginagawa ng DTI para ma-regulate ito mga networking company na by the hundreds and even thousands na po ang mga naluloko ang naisahan. And then paulit-ulit pa rin po hanggang sa ngayon, even while we speak, na meron pa rin po mga networking company who's been uh, uh, duping uh, innocent uh, people, letting them know that they're going to make money out of this. And we've been calling DTI and asking them to investigate, and they're just not doing anything. So DTI, can you answer us today? At least now, hindi nyo na ako pwedeng taguan, hindi nyo na pwede akong uh, iwas-iwasan. Answer me. Ano pong ginagawa nyo mga hakbang na para ma-regulate po itong mga networking company at mga siguro na hindi na po pupunta sa akin ang mga taong naloko by the hundreds and even thousands dahil sila po yung na-scam ng mga networking company and you guys are not doing anything. I'm sorry for the word. Si Chairman, I will call on you, Sir Kut Castello, to respond to that question. Uh, good morning again, Mr. Chair. Uh, as to the question of the Honorable Senator Tulfo, the DTI has uh, been running after multi-level marketing companies that are not legitimate. We work on this with the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, where we get the information and who is the proper agency to advise DTI that they are not uh, legitimate. We also have a recently signed uh, a memorandum order uh, well, in the previous administration, regulating the practice of multi-level marketing companies. There are also a lot, we understand, Mr. Chair, that there are a lot of companies who even advertise themselves, and these are part of the activities done by the Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Chair, makasingit pa. So kung ginagawa niyo po yan, yung inyo pong sinasabi ngayon ng mga hakbang para mapigilan na ma-regulate po itong mga multi-level companies, bakit hanggang ngayon po tuloy-tuloy pa rin? In fact, dumami pa rin parang kabuti kung saan meron pong 
a pandemic, ito mga multi-level company promising big bucks, promising uh, a good future for the Filipino people, eh nandiyan pa rin po hindi pa rin na-address. So it's, I think it's about time na humanap po kayo ng paraan na para masiguro na ito mga multi-level company hindi na po pwede pang uh, uh, mag-dominate po, especially online. Sila po yung nagdodominate nga sa online at nag-invite po na maging miyembro ang mga kung sino-sino. And I think it's about time na makipag-coordinate kayo sa ating law enforcement. Nandiyan yung NBI, nandiyan yung PNP. Siguro po pagtulong-tulungan niyo po yan para matigilan po itong ginagawang pang-scam ng mga multi-level company and also some network companies. Uh, we acknowledge the suggestion, Mr. Chair. We will do that. We will continue intensifying our enforcement activities. We also monitor these companies online, uh, Mr. Chair. And we have already created a dedicated team to monitor on online uh, businesses, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, isa na lang po. If, if you allow me, Mr. Chair. Yes, please proceed. Please proceed, yes, sir. Isa pa po, Mr. Chair, ang aking uh, uh, talagang uh, napapansin na lumalala po na problema na inilapit din po sa akin ay yung po bang sa mga malls na meron pong mga uh, lumalapit na mga uh, promotizer bang tawag noon or, or account executive at nag-offer po ng uh, magbebenta ng kuha ng mga produkto and then uh, kapag sila po ay pinatulan dadalhin po sa isang kwarto doon sa opisina sa second floor or third floor and then prepare sign po pabentahan ng mga libu-libu mga fake products and then hanggang sa it's too late for the person, the victim siya po pala nakapag-withdraw na by the hundreds of thousands uh, of pesos doon sa kanyang ATM and then saka pa lang siya na mulat pagdating ng bahay niya na siya pala ay na-scam okay? and marami na incidenting ganon Inilalapit ko po yan sa DTI and again, DTI has been, has been very slow in acting on those kinds of complaints. And you know that DTI, palagi ako tumatawag sa inyo. Nagsasawa na nga ako sa katatawag sa inyo dahil hindi niyo ako sinasagot. Iniwas-iwasan niyo ako. Ngayon, iwasan niyo ako. Subukan niyo akong iwasan. Okay. So, we accept interview so much as well. We respond to questions. Yeah, you respond. Pero kadalasan ang pinapakausap niyo sa akin, yung mga taong hindi naman talaga dapat makapag decision. I, I need decision makers who could answer questions directly to, to, to my queries. And more often than not, hindi yan eh. I think it's a problem, um, Mr. Chairman, that we will have to coordinate with uh, other agencies in the government. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, cannot be managed or controlled uh, just by PTI alone. Uh, uh, we, will, we might have to bring into picture FEC and the uh, uh, PNP and other uh, law enforcement agencies. But thank you for bringing up this matter during this meeting so we can take appropriate action to address uh, these uh, illegal and uh, uh, practices and scams. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, because I'm going build up na po ito, Mr. Chair, and I promise po during uh, campaigning, uh, period, sinabi ko po sa aking mga uh, subscribers na once na ako po'y naging senador, lahat po ng mahinaing nila, ilalabas ko po. At this is my opportunity para i-air po itong kanila mga uh, uh, hinaing for, for a long time na ilalabas sa akin. Isa pa po, yung bang mag-advertise po yung isang company na register sa DTI na sinasabing sila ay uh, nangangailangan po ng mga empleyado at uh, sila po ay say manufacturing company kunyari, pero wag ka hindi pala sila manufacturing company kundi nagbebenta po sila mga fake products and then yung mga nag, yung mga aplikante na naaprubahan nila na pasok na raw si sweldo na po magkano pero wala ho palang sweldo kundi pagbebentahin lang po ng mga produkto at kapag uh, nagasgas na po yung aplikante nila na natanggap nila na kapag tinda na maraming produkto nila din tatanggalin na po okay and then pag disumbong po sa akin Yan po ipaparating ko sa DTI. Ang ambagal po ng DTI para investigahan yan. In so many cases, nagsasara po yung company na yun because of me. And then later on, malaman-laman ko po after a few days, sila po ay nagbukas ulit using a different name. Now my question is, is there a way para sa DTI ma-monitor itong mga kumpanya nags nagsara para yung mga uh, uh, incorporator nung previous one na napasara ko na hindi na sila makapag-open again uh, ng, uh, ng company using a different name? Wala ho ba kayo dyan sa sa database ninyo na kapag na, na ban na o nasara na, napasara na isang company, hindi na siya pwede, yung mga incorporator na hindi na pwede makapagbukas o makapaggamit ng a different name? Sir Chairman, the registration of the DTI 
or has is just registration of the business name, making sure that uh, we avoid uh, one entity using uh, the same name. Uh, we do not monitor the operation of the company after uh, the name is registered with us. If it's a corporation, uh, then the Securities and Exchange Commission will have the jurisdiction over the company. Okay, so my question now again, Mr. Chair. So, ano pong guarantee meron po itong mga kababayan natin na itong mga mandarambong, yung mga recidivists na paulit-ulit na po ng luloko using one name at another ay uh, hindi na po makapag-ulit. So, kung halimbawa, gumamit siya ng isang company and then siya po inabuking and then magbubukas another company, still nandun pa rin siya sa in, in, isa pa rin sa mga corporator and then number two, number three, number four, wala nang katapusan. So, do we have to pass legislation pertaining to that or yung DTI na po pwede siguro gumawa ng paraan na kapag nakita nila, dapat meron pong screening sa mga incorporators. Kapag nakita nyo itong incorporators na ito, eh, inireklamo na before, in the past, eh siguro gagawa muna kayo ng due, due diligence to investigate if these people really are legit at kung sila po ay, ay nanluloko lang, eh huwag na po na sana natin payagan sila ay uh, may, may ilagay sa incorporators o ma, ma, makasama sa negosyo ang binubuksang bago. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Wala po sa jurisdiction ng DTI yung investigahan ng mga incorporators. Uh, para na sinabi ko na, ang rinirehistro ng namin ay yung pangalan ng entity, yung uh, trade name nila. Uh, ang solution dito na nakikita ko based on uh, my observation is an educational campaign. We need, you know, we need to teach our people how to decide on uh, on who to deal to deal with uh, with respect to uh, trade or with respect to investment. Mahirap po, napakaraming million million po ang tao natin dito at uh, hindi, hindi natin na monitor ang galaw ng bawat isa. Ang kailangan natin turuan ay yung mga tao mismo. Siguro magkaroon tayo ng educational campaign so that uh, we can make them aware kung paano ang dapat nilang uh, sistema, pag-desisyon kung kanin sila makikipag-transaksyon. Meron ba kayong ginagawang gano'n ngayon? Uh, Mr. Chet, tinatanong ko po itong DTI uh, OSEC ngayon na nagsasalita. Meron ba kayong gano'n? Ginagamit yung bang media para total libre naman po. Yung, tulad ng programa ko po, pwede yung gamitin yan anytime kahit na everyday. Ako po ay mag-disimilate ng information para sa ikabubuti po. Tapakan po ng mga viewers at ng mga ta ng taong bayan. Mukhang wala ho ata kayong gano'ng klaseng information dissemination. Ikaw mismo nagsabi, na dapat to educate the, the, the consumers, pero mukhang nagkulang ata kayo sa departamentong yan, Sel. Uh, Mr. Chair, with the indulgence of Secretary Pascual, we have one entire bureau, Mr. Chair, that's called the Consumer Policy and Advocacy Bureau that conducts uh, lectures on multi-level marketing and what what to, what to watch out for, what to look for in the market, Mr. Chair. But uh, thank you for the suggestion, sir. We will consider that. We will intensify some more uh, the consumer education that we do. Although existing as a program is the consumer care webinar, which we hold twice a week, every Tuesday and Thursday, sir. We also include uh, in our sessions from resource speakers uh, the things that consumers would need to know so that they can protect themselves uh, out in the market. Mr. Chair. Okay. May meron tayo, Mr. Chair, last na lang po. Meron po tayo, Mr. Chair, na tinatawag na Lemon Law, okay? And everybody knows what Lemon Law is. Pero it seems na hindi po nagagawa na ata, eh, hindi po na-implement yun at uh, wala man nagagawa yung ating mga kinukulan. Example, si Mario bumili po ng isang car, and I'm not gonna mention the brand. It, this one, ang dami ko na pong na-receive na reklamo. And then after, brand new po ito, after a week, nag-bug down yung car, and it has nothing to do with the interior, it has something to do with the engine, and then dinala po sa dealership. And then, uh, sabi ng dealership, ila repair. And then, naulit po yan for several times. Several times. And ang, ang punto ko una, number one, kapag nasira po yung sasakyan at brand new po, sana binibigyan po ng loaner. Meaning, binibigyan ng sasakyan na magagamit po nung nagbili. Nung nagbili sa kanila, nung brand new car. Wala pong ganun eh. So, ang, the, 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 the consumer, eh, bib, magre-rent po siya ng sasakyan. O dili kaya mag-commit na lang siya. Eh, meron siyang kotse, di ba? Nagbumili siya ng brand new. Anyway, Pangalawa, kung paulit-ulit na lamang po sana, dapat meron tayong kumbaga sinasabi na limit na kung ito'y 10 times na bumabalik-balik na lang sa shop ninyo, sirain na talaga, eh dapat palitan na. Hindi po eh, hanggang sa umabot sa korte. 
talagang nagmamatigas po ito mga dealership. E alam naman nila, yung kanilang sasakyan na inaibenta ay sirain talaga, paulit-ulit na lang. But hindi na lang po, uh, tanggalin na po yung kalbaryo sa bumili ng kotse at palitan na lang brand new. So is there anything that BTI can do with that issue? Uh, it's an initiative matter that uh, we will uh, leave with Congress and uh, to the extent that we can provide inputs, we will from the DTI. May I answer? Also, yeah, we have some kind of uh, points, uh, you say, group. Yes, sir. In addition to that, Mr. Chairman, uh, the DTI Fair Trade Enforcement Bureau strictly enforces the Lemon Law. And as a matter of fact, we have. Uh, already uh, decided or resolved the cases in favor of the consumer, but there are a lot of times also, Mr. Chair, that the that the distributors or the manufacturers of these vehicles uh, go on appeal. So uh, it takes a while before the appeal is resolved, um, Mr. Chair. But we have already and we are <coughs> enforcing the lemon law or implementing the lemon law, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, in connection with the Lemon Law? Uh, yes, uh, Senator Pimentel. Then afterwards, uh, Senator Wynne Pimentel. also has his hand. Thank you. Uh, yes, if you have a follow-up. Yes. I will, I will refile my bill uh, on the Philippine Lemon Law because uh, the current procedure is too cumbersome. Meron na po kami na isip dyan how to streamline it. And then pati yung mga... In the meantime, that the consumer is... Uh, deprived of the new vehicle he has he or she has bought the uh, dealer and the and or the manufacturer must provide for a replacement vehicle nandun po yan yung mga ideas na yan nandun po sa aking uh, uh, Philippine lemon law bill i will i will refile it this congress thank you very much mr mr chairman yes uh, thank you uh, senator pimentel at, at this point uh, uh, before i recognize uh, senator gachalian i just like to say that i agree with uh, Senator and Vice Chair Tool Four, uh, we, there must be some mechanism to monitor these uh, multi-level that that uh, at times masquerade as. Uh, I mean, actually, it's it's sometimes there are Ponzi schemes that masquerade as multi-level schemes, and these really have to be uh, somehow we must monitor it. And it seems to be not clear. It doesn't seem to be clear uh, who if it falls under the SEC or if it falls under the DTI. There are different aspects: consumer protection. Also, the the nature of the company. So I think that's that's an that's an issue that uh, I think we can tackle here in the committee in the future, and perhaps come up with legislation that can uh, minimize. Because it seems every year there seems to be uh, uh, problems with this. Uh, um, sometimes uh, it can be uh, pyramiding disguises multi level. So we must maybe find a way to uh, minimize this. Uh, at the same time. Uh, Hopefully, uh, with, with regards to the Lemon Law, I hope that, uh, yes, if there are observations after the initial law, I was also one of the authors of the initial law, so perhaps uh, I look forward to seeing the uh, uh, the proposals of Senator Pimentel, and I hope that uh, the, the Department of Trade Industry can also perhaps give a, a rep, uh, maybe a representative who can coordinate directly with uh, Senator Tulfo, because he has many concerns from his uh, his um, his viewers or his uh, many complaints. So I hope that maybe the DTI can coordinate with him directly or give a point person who can help him address the concerns of his uh, of of also of his um, of his listeners or of his um, his uh, followers. Uh, we will do that, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, and at this point, I'd like to recognize Senator Gachalian. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I would just like to get some updates on the GSP plus um, agreement. And um, I know for a fact that uh, a few years ago, uh, there was an audit and a team from EU came here to uh, talk to legislators, talk to the executive side. And um, I understand that um, there's also some issue uh, with our GSP plus and we are and the dfa actually uh, requested the senate no to uh, to um, to help out in the extension of the gsp plus and also to reach out to our counterparts in the eu so i would like to get some updates on uh, the gsp plus 
also what the Senate can do in order to continue uh, with our membership with the GSP Plus. I, I saw the numbers earlier, um, almost um, 2 billion euros in terms of uh, trade. So it's not it's a very significant amount. So uh, we'd like to also see how we can help to extend this. Did Gemma Yusek Perry will respond to that question? Thank, thank you, Secretary, and thank you, Senator Gachaya, for that question. First of all, uh, to sincerely thank the uh, members of the Senate for all of the collaboration throughout these years so that we could uh, maintain our GSP plus, not just GSP plus, but GSP in general with the other countries. But the thing was, EU, Nakita, Tamaho, Senator Gachaya, uh, almost 7,000 plus tariff lines of the EU's 9,000 tariff lines. But the thing was a GSP plus that we are enjoying, it's 0% to be. And we are the only ASEAN member country that is part of the uh, GSP plus scheme. Uh, alam naman po natin na uh, pagdating po sa GSP plus, ang ganda po dito, mayroon siyang monitoring mechanism na at nagbingin po tayo at the technical level tapos binibigay natin yung mga dato sa kanila para ma ma masagot talaga yung mga specific questions nila. And so far, uh, naging successful po tayo sa pag-respond sa mga queries nila. Meron yung political level, tapos merong technical level. Of course, sa political level, uh, medyo iba na po yung usapan doon. And doon na talaga very useful yung uh, engagements natin with the legislators. And to understand from our coordination also with the Department of uh, Foreign Affairs that there might be a, a delegation coming from the Senate who will be visiting uh, Brussels this coming October. And part of the discussions will also be on the GSP Plus. So we'd like to also be able to provide you a uh, specific briefing doon. Saka siguro let's coordinate para meron tayong ano, uh, magandang sagot doon. But uh, that, that's just the context. Pero in general, no, nakaka, na, na maintain mo natin yung ating GSP Plus privilege. But doon ko sa huling bisita rito ng team from the European Commission that this was uh, early this year, uh, in-highlight ko talaga nila that uh, there might, yung, yung, yung uh, monitoring, monitoring cycle na yun, uh, meron sila mga in-highlight ng mga issues din talaga concerning uh, human rights. Uh, yun po yung major issue. Uh, we've been able to also provide them uh, with them the responses, uh, but continuing ko yung engagement natin. Tapos, so very important to, aside from the monitoring mission that is happening on the current GSP Plus, uh, matatapos na kasi itong GSP Plus scheme na ito by 2023. Sa 2024, meron pong bagong GSP Plus na regime na implement si EU. And sana po makasama pa rin tayo doon. Kaya very important yung magiging engagement ni ng Senate uh, pagpunta niyo sa Brussels this uh, October. Uh, but to provide more details, I'd like to request si Asik Alan ko madagdagan niya yung uh, mga uh, detalye na binigay ko. But in summary, oh, nakakapasa tayo na nasusustain natin, na maintain. Although may mga areas na hinahilight talaga during the last uh, visit nila uh, early part of this year, in particular ang pagdating sa human rights. Thank you, Senator. Highland. Thank you, uh, Yusek Perry. Uh, uh, before, before we proceed, uh, if there are, perhaps if it's uh, in the interest of time also, if there are certain uh, uh, details, we can ask, you can submit it to the committee uh, if uh, um, if the if the details are uh, extensive, so I just like to uh, raise that option. If uh, that uh, if it's uh, instead of uh, presenting, perhaps uh, there are certain details that can be submitted to the committee and also to Senator uh, Gachalian. With that option, so far we will we'll take that option and submit to you the details. Thank you, Senator. Ch Chairman, lastly, there's just two things you said, Perry. So number one is mag expire na GSP plus natin that. Tama po ba? Yes, uh, Senator, yung, yung programa mismo matatapos na, not just for the Philippines, but for all the Philippines. Okay. And then number two, um, the Senate is organizing a delegation and uh, 
would like to request from DTI a briefing on that matter and how we can move forward because with 2.3 billion in terms of trade, malaki -laki rin siya, no? a lot of uh, positive impact for us. So we'd like to seek your uh, briefing and through the chairman of uh, the trade committee on how the Senate, kasi magpapadala tayo ng delegation. So we have to make sure that we go home with uh, the bacon or else saing naman yung punta. Thank you, Senator. We will certainly do that, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Gachalian. Yes, uh, so we can maximize the trip. I agree with uh, Senator Gachalian. If we can, uh, prior to leaving, hopefully, I mean, prior to leaving, we hope you can give us a, a very uh, um, comprehensive briefing regarding the issues that we can take up there. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, please continue with your, uh, at this point, you can continue with your presentation. Thank you. I may call on uh, Yusek Pita uh, Daba to present on the Philippine Industrial Policy. Thank you, um, Sir Secretary, and good morning, Sir Chair, and uh, honorable members of the committee. Next slide, please. I'm uh, here to discuss our uh, industrialization uh, strategy. And as you can see on the slide, this is our framework. Uh, it's going to be driven by science, technology, and innovation in order to put our industries in a better uh, position to enable us to face competition from exports as well as uh, within the domestic market and pave the way for uh, the country's industrial transformation. And as you can see, new technologies along with the application of uh, um, science and innovation, we will be able to introduce new and better products in the market along with uh, services. And this would lead to uh, the creation of new jobs and better income opportunities along with the emergence of new industries as well as the introduction of environmental goods. Uh, these new technologies would also help in terms of improving our production efficiency and has better uh, use of energy and materials leading to industrial competitiveness, as well as providing linkages to our supporting activities. And um, in terms of the foundation, we're looking at, uh, of course, competition, innovation, productivity, and uh, dynamic industry ecosystem in order to uh, help the country attain uh, an inclusive and sustainable industrial transformation and development. Next slide, please. Um, the next slide, you can see six major pillars of our strategy. Number one is uh, embracing the fourth industrial revolution technologies, wherein uh, the focus is towards transforming our industries towards an increasing share of science, technology, intensive sectors to the GDP. Number two is uh, creating more innovative MSMEs and startups. And in here, we are focusing our efforts towards upsizing and upgrading our MSMEs. We want more uh, micros to graduate into uh, becoming small, the small to medium, and the medium to uh, become large. And the third is uh, we are integrating our industry development trade and investment policies. We are linking manufacturing with agriculture and services. This would enable us to address gaps in the supply and value chain and deepen our uh, global value chain participation, allowing us to expand our trade and investment, diversify our export products, as well as our trading partners and investment partners. The next one is uh, promoting regional development through innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, regional industrialization is uh, really vital, especially in terms of introducing more innovation in the regions as in order for us to create new products, services, as well as accelerate and promote research commercialization in the regions. The next is upskilling and reskilling the workforce. Again, as we adopt all these new technologies, we need to ensure that our workforce uh, would be ready, especially in terms of the competencies and skills that would be demanded by industries in the future. 
The last, um, also very important, is of course the creation of an enabling economic environment in order for us to attract more investments. And this would cover both hard and soft infrastructure, uh, covering power, logistics, uh, digital infrastructure, and uh, others. In the next slide, uh, these are our priority industry clusters. The first three clusters that you can see, industrial manufacturing and transport, technology, media, and telecommunications, as well as health and life sciences. There's global reconfiguration arising from uh, changes in consumer trends and consumer behavior, um, and hence uh, global reconfiguration is happening uh, in the global value chains of these clusters, and hence we are focusing our activities towards positioning our industries um, in view of these changes in the three uh, global value chains of the clusters that uh, you can see on the slide. For the IMT, this would include aerospace, automotive, EV, um, in particular, semiconductor and electronic manufacturing services, including the processing of uh, green metals, wherein, uh, of course, what we want is uh, for the Philippines to be able to manufacture manufactured batteries here in the country, given our rich nickel, cobalt, and copper uh, ores uh, in the country. For the next one, TMT, this would include uh, activities in ITBTM, hyperscale data centers, the creative economy, and digital economy. For health and life sciences, this would include biotech, pharmaceuticals, medical devices, healthcare services, and digital health products. We added the fourth cluster, and this would be uh, for us to promote modern basic needs, as well as uh, resilient, promote a more resilient uh, economy, as well as other activities to help the country in our economic recovery. And this would include food security, agriculture, agro-industrial, fishing, infrastructure, education, shelter, sanitation, including renewable energy, energy efficiency, and green ecosystems. Next, please. Um, in the next slide, uh, I'll be uh, just to highlight the digital transformation plans of uh, the department. The first one is uh, the plan to build an industry 4.0 uh, pilot factory. This is uh, going to um, host or serve as a platform for demonstration and uh, learning. Uh, it's also going to provide training as well as uh, serve as hub. Uh, where our um, universities, researchers, and industries could conduct their uh, R&D. And uh, the pilot factory will also facilitate industry access to advanced manufacturing technologies like robotics, intelligent manufacturing systems, and cyber uh, physical systems. And this is going to serve um, our large enterprises, SMEs, and uh, academy. Um, Okay. Next slide. Next slide, please. So uh, let us skip that in the interest of time. And we're also, next please, we're also building a center for AI uh, research, and the goal of which is to make the Philippines a center of excellence in AI. Next, please. Uh, we're also uh, implementing the Philippine Skills Framework, and this is important. Uh, we are working together with other government agencies, the logos of the eight other uh, agencies are 10 um, uh, in total are all shown on the slide. And this is important in order for us to ensure that we have the necessary skills and competencies needed as industries adopt uh, the fourth industrial revolution technologies. Next, please. And uh, we also uh, have uh, the regional inclusive innovation centers that uh, serve as platforms to promote innovation and entrepreneurship across the different regions in the country. On the slide, we've also listed uh, the nine uh, regional inclusive innovation uh, centers across uh, the different regions. Next, please. And um, in view of the, uh, the passing of uh, the EVIDA, uh, EVIDA uh, we are uh, about to implement a program together with uh, UNIDO 
And this is going to uh, deploy e drives, e chimneys, e buses, and other EVs um, in the different uh, cities that you can see on the slide. And you will also be uh, piloting an electric vehicle incentive uh, system through this uh, program with the UNIDO. And the last one, next please, is uh, in view of the uh, legislation as well of uh, the Creative Industry Development Act. We have uh, lined up a number of programs uh, as we try to implement this uh, app. So we have uh, established uh, or we will be implementing various uh, programs to uh, strengthen our uh, institutions, implement the Creative Venture Fund, establish creative learning uh, centers and innovation centers, as well as support uh, uh, our market acceleration program. I'm going to end the research here. Thank you very much. Thank you. At this, uh, if there are no questions uh, at this point, I'd like to uh, perhaps we can perhaps we can already go to the uh, uh, legislative proposal before you. Actually, Mr. Chairman, I do have a question on, on the presentation. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. Uh, yes, we'd like to recognize yeah. Senator Cayetano first before proceeding. Thank you. Um, first of all, I don't know if we were given copies of the presentation, so can I just make a request now to give us copies of all the presentations? Um, what I so I had to take a screenshot of the presentation so I can discuss it. Um, I'm happy to to hear about the priority industry clusters now, and that's where my question is. Um, due to the health and life sciences um, and modern basic needs. No? Before before I propose my question, yeah, but thank you, because my phone is so small, so there, I prefer that there that one, okay. So first of all, um, and let, let me let me uh, officially greet the DTI team, uh, Secretary, good morning. Um, okay. I chair the Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation and Futures Thinking. Um, and my first request to the Secretary is please always send uh, someone to my hearings now because what I what I feel is um, left behind is the interconnectivity between agencies on the importance of uh, working together to achieve the overall goal. So I'll give you a very specific example in what I in what I mean. No? Um, under health and life sciences, um, I, I won't go through the list, no? but basically these are the delivery of health services, right? Um, during the hearing, no? the hearing uh, of the Committee on Ways and Means, um, I had asked Secretary Diokno if DOF would be open to considering a limited, for a limited time only, um, uh, tax-free importation of health equipment. And I align this with the President's SONA statement that uh, we need to improve access to specialty hospitals all over the country. To be clear, uh, any health advocate and DOH position is, and I, I agree, uh, we need to focus on basic health care. Now, many barangays don't even have barangay health centers. So before we can really contemplate on specialty hospitals, basic health care is priority. But on that note, basic specialty they will need equipment. So dito pumapasok yung industry cluster prioritization nyo. So I will ask you a similar, a same question I asked DOF. Now, would you be open, I'm not even asking for a firm commitment, but would you be open to um, explore and to possibly propose incentives for these sectors? And remember, I am the author of the CREATE law. No? So the idea really, is, if you ask me, it's covered within the CREATE law. But um, I'm asking for the for the, I'd, I'd like to understand the, how the secretary thinks about this idea. And I'll go to another point, food security, same then. Again, that's also in the create laws. So I just like to know the direction of uh, the, the department under Secretary Pascual. Well, definitely we welcome any move to facilitate the establishments of uh, enterprises in these industry clusters that we have identified. Um, because I, I believe, you know, that uh, uh, by industrializing, 
especially in the areas we have identified, will be able to provide higher quality jobs and higher paying jobs to our people. So we welcome any move to uh, make it to facilitate, for example, the importation of equipment needed uh, by enterprises. Most likely, the enterprises that uh, will go be going into these uh, clusters will be registered with the BOI. So they'll be enjoying these uh, incentives. Uh, we will uh, identify uh, areas where possibly they may not qualify, but I doubt whether they will qualify uh, for registration with uh, BOI to enjoy the, the tax free importation and other incentives uh, offered to uh, investors. Okay, thank you. I'm happy to hear that. So basically, um, uh, to the DTI. Team, no? um, my, my request is that you work closely with the different uh, areas, like ito nga, you mentioned health science. So work carefully with BOH to really find out what are those needs, because that's the only way we can really um, identify the needs and truly address them. Uh, let me go to another slide. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I would like to add, in case to add, I would say that uh, most of these uh, investors into this industry clusters will most likely come from abroad. You know, this will be foreign investors setting up uh, these uh, enterprises here together in partnership with uh, uh, local investors. And uh, the target of these uh, industry clusters is the export market. Uh, we want uh, these uh, uh, enterprises to be participating in the global value chains in, in, in this, uh, the, in the products produced under these clusters. So it is very important, I'd like to emphasize that uh, the RCEP, Regional Comprehensive uh, Economic uh, Partnership, be ratified or be confirmed by uh, the Senate. Uh, because that's, we've always been asked by prospective investors by foreign chambers about how soon uh, they'll see the ratification of RCEP uh, because their own uh, people, their own uh, uh, the companies in their respective jurisdictions are asking them uh, before they consider uh, uh, investments in the Philippines. Uh, yes, noted on that. And actually, I was going to ask the chairman if he will. Um... I, I'm not sure if, it's, if this is the Committee on Trade or the Committee on Foreign Affairs that handles it, but uh, we're always happy to to learn more. I understand, <clears throat> I, I recall that we <clears throat> were not able to pass it in the last Congress because there were a lot of concerns from different senators. But I won't go into that. No? Let me just finish my my point on uh, <clears throat> the interrelated, um, the importance no, of uh, the different agencies discussing these, these uh, concerns. Um, Again, no, uh, looking at the same list, I didn't move yet to another slide. Um, when, when I see the list of um, potential um, investment areas, no, it, it's very exciting. But I'll go back to uh, working closely with other sectors. And now specifically, I'm referring to CHED and our state universities and even the private universities. Um, everybody talks about the importance of STEM. And in fairness, BOST has had cons consistently um, uh, been supporting, and, and Congress has supported the budget now for scholars for for uh, for scholars enrolled in, in STEM. But we need now to align this with the job creation that um, your department is envisioning, Your Honor, because a lot of them will either end up going abroad or end up in unrelated. Fields, no. So, which is which is kind of sad. So, we, as early as now, you have six years. Let's plan this carefully. Work with the state universities. What are the demands? What particulars? What specializations are you looking for? Because STEM is very broad, no. So, do you do you want people um, in in food um, in food engineering? Uh, do you want people in um, in um, manufacturing? We need to understand what we really expect from our a uh, human resource pool, and then really align this with the demands. Because otherwise, and I've been a senator since 2004, um, 
I have not seen enough um, coordination between agencies, no, from the production of the health, uh, the production of the human resource, no, the skilled human resource that we need. It's rarely aligned with what the vision is. It's, it's all general. It's all, um, you know, it's all, um, I don't want to say it's for show. It's, I don't believe it was ever for show, but there's a lack of intent in coordinating uh, these efforts, Your Honor. So I, I'm so excited when I read this digital health products and services, um, smart watches, precise yes. sensors. So I know this is. Um, yes. More on either this. This is uh, great in terms of um, precision manufacturing. We'll bring investors, but it would be great if if the products could also be made. Um, you know, the the innovations could be made by our local talents as well, instead of them going abroad and then creating it for other companies, uh, and then them selling it to us or coming back to us when. The chances of us creating it could have been could have been made sooner if we had aligned our ideas earlier, Mr. Chairman. So just a quick response on that. Yeah, okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, one of the slides we showed was the Philippine Skills Framework. It uh, there. So it is uh, on this slide you will see the how we relate the priority sectors with the uh, skills needed to uh, be able to pursue uh, industrial development in those sectors. Uh, when I made this presentation to the cabinet, I highlighted very specifically the need to collaborate for DPI to collaborate with uh, CHED. Uh, DepEd and uh, TESDA for purposes of uh, developing the necessary skills among our work, among our human resources, our workforce. Uh, actually, Mr. Chairman, may I just recommend um, the coordination? I've seen it for the past almost 20 years and it rarely happens. Maybe you can really look into forming a, a committee that, that really sits down together and works together because otherwise it doesn't happen. And I'm just letting you know, Secretary, from my experience, no, haven't seen it happen in a continuous and effective manner. So um, uh, unless you really put together a team that's constantly working on this, it's not going to be, I, I don't want to have this discussion three, four, five years from now na hindi din pala nagkatugma. So that's just my recommendation. Um, one last example I want to share with you. Um, uh, when we approved, when 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 the law was passed, um, uh, shifting our 10-year uh, basic education to 12, so the K to 12 program, uh, there was a lot of resistance to that. But regardless, we now have a K to 12 program. And the idea there, Mr. Chairman, um, is that uh, you will graduate senior high students with high skills such that they, for those who don't continue an academic track, they are skilled. So these are people who could have already, these are young graduates who could already be in the sectors. Uh, I am not aware of many programs that have this. I'm aware of one. Um, this is an IBM um, program in Taguig City. I'm sure there are more, but as I said, I'm just not aware of them. IBM and Taguig City tied up a few years ago, wherein starting, I believe, grade 9, I'm oh, no, sorry, grade, because ele grade 11 and 12 are senior high, so 10, parang grade, grade 10 or grade 9 na, three or four year program, and when they finish, they will get a job in IBM. So, uh, no, sorry, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be mistaken, this quite some time ago, I think it was a four or five year program that included two senior high years and two college, two years of college. The point is, they're not college grad, they're not a graduate of four year program, but because they you know, sila for a very for very specific skills, by the time they graduate senior high, they already have those skills and they can go on to two more years na lang of college and they'll be hired by IBM. So we need more programs like that, Mr. Chairman, because otherwise, an, 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 an capacity nung, 
senior high graduate, I, I, I challenge you, and in a good way, I don't mean this in a, but my challenge to you is find out what your senior high, what our senior high graduates are capable of. Find out if they can already be applied in these in these sectors. Kasi if not, ano yung purpose nga naman na nagpa-senior high pa tayo, di ba? So that's my challenge kasi kayo directly ang magpapa-employ nito eh, di ba? The, the, the desire to to employ more young people or young or old people, I think is under your jurisdiction, um, Mr. Secretary. So that's what you have, you have to find out. Are your senior high capable of, of um, being employed in this sector? And finally, so the example I gave you were senior high graduates. Um, to continue the story, the idea was they graduate from senior high and then they go into college and can get specialized courses. No? Uh, the idea was to remove the general education courses in the, the first two years of college because they should have already taken that up in the senior high. But again, I ask you to, that's why it's so important that you meet together because for years, uh, my brother, Senator Allen, and I have been asking Ched, nabawasan na ba yung subject? Kasi they're still, they're still learning the same GEs. And just recently, um, one of my inaanaks uh, decided to study abroad despite um, financial difficulties. Kasi yung tinuturo daw sa kanya in first year college, and this is coming from a very, very respected um, university, is exactly the same thing na natutunya niya in senior high. So this is education. This is not your jurisdiction specifically, Mr. Uh, Secretary. But I'm telling you because you want skilled, um, skilled uh, human resource. So it matters to you. It should matter to you what is coming out of our senior high and our college program. So on that note, Mr. Chairman, I, I, um, I uh, won't ask any other questions. I still have a lot, but I think I can ask for briefings on the other issues I'm concerned about. Um, but I just really want the commitment from the secretary that they will work very closely with the other agencies to see that they're that they can pursue their mandate. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would I agree 100% with the observations of uh, Senator Pia uh, Caetano, and uh, as I already said, uh, the commitment to coordinate with other uh, concerned agencies of the government. As I, I have made already in my presentation to the cabinet. I also would like to see whether, in fact, the legislature is uh, coming up with uh, the creation of the second education commission, which is very important to address all the points uh, raised earlier by uh, uh, Senator Pia Caetano. Uh, so that uh, well, the Right now, we are in a trifocal governance of our education system. And again, we need the education sector. There doesn't seem to be sufficient uh, uh, coordination. So I hope that the Education Commission number two that uh, will be created will address all these uh, uh, concerns and come up with a governance structure that will facilitate uh, coordination and a, a holistic approach to the education of our uh, youth. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. At uh, this point, before proceeding to the, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Chair. the presentation, I'd like to recognize uh, Senator Gachalian. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. M uh, Mr. Chair, uh, quickly, uh, let me thank uh, Yusek Aldaba for uh, her um, untiring cooperation and effort in the crafting of the Electric Vehicles Industry Act. Uh, initially, when we were crafting this bill, this was meant to uh, incentivize the purchase of electric vehicles. But when she joined the, co the, the discussion, uh, she converted it uh, into an industry promotion and an industry development law, which is absolutely necessary and in line with the industrialization framework of the DTI. So. Um, I just want to thank uh, Yusek Aldaba for her ep efforts. Um, uh, tangent to this, actually, I, I read an article that in uh, Indonesia, uh, they are thinking of imposing a nickel tax to discourage the export of nickel because their move there is to develop their downstream uh, industry, meaning put up processing plants 
because the value added from the processing plant obviously uh, earns more revenue for Indonesia. So in line, again, in line with the industrialization framework of um, the DTI, uh, is there any aggressive or, and conscious efforts to develop our downstream industry, uh, nickel and other products? No? But nickel is my top of mind because we actually export a lot of raw nickel to China and China processes it, process the raw nickel, uh, comes up with um, batteries, with uh, all of those things, and then exports back to the Philippines. No? So uh, my question is, is, is there any conscious effort, aggressive and conscious effort to develop our downstream industry? Mr. Chairman, definitely there is an effort. In fact, uh, we have ex explicitly listed in the uh, list of uh, in listed the processing of uh, mineral ores into semi-finished and finished products. Uh, and the case of nickel ores is uh, front and center in the discussion. We are aware of what Indonesia did and uh, the further processing of nickel ore in Indonesia, according to a, uh, a speech of the Great Minister of Indonesia, has yielded the country uh, export revenues uh, six times what it could have achieved if they just exported uh, raw uh, nickel ore. And we hope to be able to uh, duplicate that kind of effort. In fact, in the post on a uh, uh, economic briefing that happened uh, the day after the SONA president. I, I also touched on this, and uh, there is a major business group that's already in the process of uh, putting together a processing plant for nickel. And uh, according to the head of that group, when he approached me, he said that he expects increase in revenue by a factor of 15. Uh, between exporting raw nickel ore and uh, finished product. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad to hear that, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you, uh, th thank you, Senator. At this point, I'd like to recognize uh, the, the DTI again, uh, but I hope uh, perhaps we can request that we expedite this uh, presentation, uh, maybe just the broad strokes so that in the interest of time, uh, uh, we can uh, move, keep moving, keep the um, presentation moving forward. So please, just the uh, major points, the rest we can submit to the committee uh, with the indulgence of the committee. Okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, may I request a new sex? A sec? No, uh, sir. Sir, uh, yeah. you go to the initiative agenda. Uh, oh, yes. Okay. So we'll go directly to the initiative agenda, Mr. Chairman. Uh, wait, uh, is there, uh, would there, would that be okay with the committee if we can uh, request them to submit the uh, their uh, the port of the portion of their presentation at MSMEs and we proceed directly to the legislative agenda? Is there any objections? Mr. Chairman, we have uh, submitted all the materials that we are presenting now. To so, are there being no objections? Uh, yes, pr please proceed with the legislative agenda. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, we would like to present uh, legislative priorities of the DTI. Uh, we start with the three uh, priority legislations, uh, namely the RCEP. You can go to the slide. Uh, the the RCEP, which was uh, discussed earlier by you, Secretary and the Secretary. Uh, and this is referred to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. The next one is uh, is an omnibus MSME MSME code. So this takes into account the various uh, proposals in the last Congress and also in the, uh, in the current uh, Congress on MSMEs. And the last one is the Internet Transaction Act. Uh, there are other bills that are under review by the Secretary of Trade, and we will be presenting these uh, bills as we have come into consensus on these. Uh, the Can you go to the next slide? Uh, 
So to facilitate the process, I would like to uh, request if you can uh, recognize ASIC June to discuss the details of the Internet Transactions Act. Um, good morning, Mr. Chair, and uh, all the honorable members of the Senate Committee of Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship. Um, the proposed Internet Transactions Act, um, the whole title of the bill is an act providing protection to consumers and merchants, um, creating for the purpose the e commerce bureau and appropriating funds thereof. Um, as uh, this, was uh, uh, this was mentioned by the president during the the state of the nation address. Um, it really is about um, establishing an effective regulation for consumer for commercial activities done through the internet. Um, we'd like to see a robust e-commerce sector um, that will also protect consumers, uh, consumer protection, data privacy, intellectual property, um, and security, um, as well as of course um, adherence to our product and safety standards. Um, Mr. Chair, um, uh, I think um, th this is quite significant um, given that uh, I'd like, like to cite the study of um, Google Temasek, which said that the Philippines is the fastest growing internet economy in Southeast Asia. Um, there, uh, the study did say about 12 million new consumers, um, and, and about 99% of those that were interviewed said that they would go on. Uh, continuing with uh, digital uh, uh, services and going through e-commerce. Um, in the interest of time, Mr. Chair, I, I do an abridged version. Can we ask the secretary to please continue this, guys? Um, I guess um, we'd like to show that uh, um, the DDI is indeed for, um, pursuing the Internet Transactions Act for two reasons, which is one, to make sure that uh, um, uh, consumers are protected, and also because we'd like to see more, um, more um, servers selling online. So, um, go ahead now. Go to the DDI slide. Um, we did the business. Uh, we handled the business name registration. Um, and in that, uh, in under the business registration, you, you could see that prior to the pandemic, we had like only a thousand eight hundred. But towards the end of the year, um, there are really um the, the registration for online selling for the retail sale via the internet has substantially increased. Um, similarly, Mr. Chair, consumer protection. Likewise, there has been a, an increase also of uh, of uh, complaints um, on on online transactions. Um, I think uh, I think we did pass on on uh, on the e-commerce ecosystem. I believe, Mr. Chair, we have seen some of the the players who are in the in the in the meeting today. Um, what we just wanted to um, highlight is that the DEI. Um, has been very um, has engaged with the private sector, particularly e-commerce ecosystem, and that e-commerce ecosystem really is about um, whether you are a consumer, a, a merchant, um, you are in digital payments or um, logistics, last mile delivery services, the digital platforms that neighbor that enables. This will all be affected by the internet transactions. Um, Okay, we, we, I won't go, Mr. Chair, into the details as we have submitted our debt to the Secretariat, uh, but um, the status of the bill um, of the Internet Transactions Act, let's go to slide 16. Um, Mr. Chair, the, in the 18th Congress, um, the House has approved this um, uh, on third reading, and in the Senate, it, this has likewise been approved, uh, I'm sorry, um, pending on second reading with Chair Senator Pimentel. Um, as, uh, as um, as our uh, uh, committee chair uh, at the time, the committee of three, um, based on 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 uh, what we have um, I think recorded is that today the 19th Congress, um, there has been two bills filed in the Senate and uh, 13 bills filed in the House of Representatives. Um, um, I think um, if if um, I, I believe that uh, we have reports that um, since this was approved on third reading, I think in the Senate, uh, in the House, Mr. Chair, I think Section 48 will be invoked where this will go through, uh, this will pass the committee and um, with a uh, with, um, with, um, um, second reading, sir. Um, next slide, please. Um, there are salient points of the bill. Um, I won't go into that, Mr. Chair, in the interest of time, but just to highlight some of the 
um, um, items that are that, that that really are very important into the bill. I'm starting with the definition of terms. Um, in the case of e-commerce, we 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 subscribe to the Philippine national standard uh, of of, of uh, identifying online merchants. Um, e-marketplaces and e retailers, which would all be part of the Internet Transactions Act. Um, in terms of scope and coverage, uh, Mr. Chair, this is called, this is business to business, business to consumer, and consumer to consumer is not part of, um, of, um, of the Internet Transactions Act, um, of the proposed Internet Transactions Act. Um, Mr. Chair, this also, um, the proposed Internet Transactions Act also covers not only the sale of goods and services, but also uh, online travel, um, uh, media, um, um, delivery, delivery, food delivery, and digital financial services. But because this is um, a whole of government approach, the Department of Trade and Industry um, affirms that uh, the position that all the other agencies that are the regulatory agencies of these particular areas should continue um, to uh, to uh, provide those um, um, regulatory um, services as well. Um, Mr. Chair, um, uh, of course, one of the issues that um, is quite significant for the Department of Trade and Industry under the Internet Transactions Act is the clarity that will be given to the power of the Department of Trade and Industry, particularly the Secretary of Trade they should be granted um, um, the authority to issue takedown orders, including um, also, Mr. Chair, the, the um, the regulation, the regulatory jurisdiction of the Department of Trade on the digital platforms. Um, another salient point is the um, e-commerce, the creation of an e-commerce bureau, the creation of an online business registry. Um, and um, Mr. Chair, the, one of the things that is really, I think, one of the mo most contentious issues would be the issue of liability for the platforms. Um, there are also um, um, issues, on, there are also penalties that will be provided under the law. Uh, but I think the private sector will also again make a, make a comment about probably removing the, the criminal um, aspect of, uh, of the penalties. Um, Mr. Chair, I probably would want, would end um, this abridged version with a new provision uh, that we would like the DDI would like to uh, introduce, which is a if, um, which is a, a suggestion by the DDI to to, to um, add a provision on tax exemption to encourage um, newly registered e-commerce enterprises to register um, as a business. Uh, but not be concerned or um, with, with with the taxes and uh, both national and local taxes at least for the first three years, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, this will allow um, businesses, micro businesses, to pivot from offline to online, and it will also encourage them to register um, and uh, take care of the business in the first three years as they grow into a bigger business. Um, this, Mr. Chair, is the um, is the abridged version, uh, abridged version, sir, of the Internet Transactions Act. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you very much for that. It's a very interesting and very timely bill. Uh, thank you, Secretary Pasqual and the DTI family, for the comprehensive presentation. Uh, the last agenda for today's meeting is. Uh, for the hearing of the S, uh, Senate Bill Number 154 by Senator Gachalian and Senate Bill Number 612 by Senate President uh, Zubiri. This is for the Internet Transaction Act as one of the priority laws discussed during the sauna of President BBM. Uh, two Senate bills are yet to be referred to this committee involving the same topic. Uh, Senate Bill Number 806 by Senator Estrada and my version, uh, Senate Bill Number 1125. Uh, considering that the last two bills are yet to be referred, may we just request for position papers from the stakeholders present in this virtual meeting so we can uh, discuss this more extensively in the next meeting in the interest of time. If this is okay with uh, the, my fellow senators. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, uh, Senator Angara. And uh, the chair, rec and uh, we'd like to welcome uh, Senator Angara also as well. Uh, Yes, uh, Senator Angar. Yes. Thank you, ahead. Mr. Chair. Good morning to our uh, senators, our colleagues, and uh, as well as the DTI team of Secretary Paul. Uh, it seems we're moving on to discussion of a specific bill. Is this is this yeah. the case? I, I wanted to ask some questions regarding. I was reserving my questions for the end of the 
DTI presentations. Can I still ask questions on the before we move to the new bills? Can I ask questions on the yes, yes, uh, yes, of, yes, of course, of course, yes. Uh, uh you recognize uh, Senator uh, Angara. Thanks a lot, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to talk about the balance of trade. Is it true that the Philippines has the biggest trade deficit in Southeast Asia? Uh, Senator Sangara, good morning, sir. Uh, sir, Chair, see you, Sir Credit Paul. Uh, yes. yes uh, good morning, you sec. Yes. Uh, Senator Sandy, yes, sir. We have the biggest trade deficit, ano? Yes. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> I appreciate the presentation. I think it's a very good presentation, and uh, the challenge is really uh, transforming that to jobs and higher incomes. No, that's really the challenge for us. And I I know there's a lot of work and uh, uh, pen pushing being done by, uh, especially with the industrial policy uh, of Yusek Rodolfo and Yusek uh, Fita Aldaba. No, but but. Uh, how have we compared? Can you compare us? Just just say a little bit about how Vietnam and Indonesia have done over the last 10 years. I think Indonesia registered a trade surplus in the first quarter of 2022, if I'm not mistaken. No? Yes, uh, uh, thank you, Senator. Yes, yeah, Senator. Uh, si Vietnam is more of export led yung development. Niya. Kaya siya nagkaroon ng surplus. I believe si Indonesia, ang matra focus niya ho is really to industrialize, which is also what we want, considering the the uh, level of the deficit that we have. Just for context, uh, Senator uh, Sani and uh, Mr. Chair, you know, our think trade deficit has really ballooned. From 2010, we were just about, I think, $7 billion. Now, by 2018, 2019, prior to the pandemic, we were hitting $40 billion. So there was a deterioration of about... And now we're doing about $46 billion, is that right? And thought, uh, so deterioration of 33, so 40 billion dollars na in deterioration. So, so what does that tell us about our economy, uh, Yusek Perry? What does that tell us? Are, we're not producing enough, clearly, right? Yes, sir. It, we're, we, we are growing, but the, to fulfill the demand from this growth, we have been importing massively. And if you look at Senator, the main commodities, the main drivers of the deterioration, it will be, of course, rice, petroleum, but kailangan, kailangan naman natin yun. So if you exclude that, ang papasok na was steel, cement, petrochem, and very important, automotive. So ang laki kong uh, impact sa ating trade deficit ng mga yun. Kaya nga sinasabi natin, we have to really industrialize to be able yeah. to address this so, trade. Let's take it slow, uh, Yusek. No? I want to take it step by step so we can break it down uh, before we reach the conclusion. Is this a sustainable path that we are on right now? Uh, now, you know, kasi to finance that, we're relying really, as the Secretary Pascual has been saying, OFW remittances and the BPO sector. So, as long as those two are growing, eh, pero parang may, 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 ano yan, may, may ceiling dead. So, in the, oh, we really need to industrialize to be able to sustain this. Uh, kasi pag tinignan mo kasi yung graph ng balance of trade talaga natin, as you mentioned, you mentioned 2010, how much was it in 2010? 10 billion? Or how much was our trade deficit in 2010? $7 billion. $7 billion. billion. Also, ngayon, nag $40 billion, $46 billion, sad, sad. Whereas yes, Vietnam and Indonesia, pataas, di ba? Ganon. Surplus yes, sila. So I'm asking, is this a, a sustainable direction for us as a country? Or do we want to reverse it? Especially if our goals are to create higher incomes and to create more jobs for our country. Yun ang tanong ko to the department, uh, Yusek, Mr. Chair. Uh, the chairman, uh, the secretary, sir. Yes, please. Reason why I'd like to shift the focus of the department towards real effort in industrializing the country. That's the only way we can uh, sustain uh, uh, an economy that's uh, uh, well, uh, have a sustainable and inclusive economy. Inclusive in the sense that it's only from uh, industry particularly manufacturing, that our people can get uh, stable jobs, uh, better quality jobs, and uh, higher paying jobs. Uh, unless we do that, we will forever be beholden to these uh, inflows from OFWs. We'll be burdening, we'll be sending more people abroad to earn the dollar so we can uh, do the importation here. Uh, that's not uh, sustainable. The other effort, we're doing is uh, trying to encourage uh, 
enterprises that will produce goods that are currently consumer goods, like uh, processed food products that are currently being imported. Uh, whereas uh, we produce the raw materials here, and it's a matter of uh, just taking one or two more steps to be able to produce competitive products. Uh, we need to have that uh, focus in digitalization. And uh, it's not import substitution, it's uh, really industrialization to, so that uh, we will not uh, feel the growing local demands because of the influx of uh, remittances from abroad with important uh, items. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Secretary. That was the answer I was hoping for, actually. So I think we're on the right track uh, when we say that we want to have higher value paying jobs. Pero pag tinanong kasi, where are the jobs going to come from? Minsan ang sagot ng ating economic managers is construction. So honestly, are high, higher paying jobs going to come from construction? Kasi clearly hindi, di ba? In fact, these are many of these uh, sector jobs. This is, this is supposed to be the highest one of the higher product producing uh, sectors in terms of jobs. But it's not going to be higher value jobs. So my, my next question, taking off from what uh, this, the good secretary mentioned, where are these high paying jobs going to come from? Well, manufacturing, firstly, let's start from home. We produce uh, agricultural products that can undergo further processing. Uh, one of the strategies we are adopting is to create industry clusters. Uh, industry cluster on cacao, uh, industry cluster on coffee. Imagine, even for coffee, we are only supplying 20% of the coffee requirement from our own uh, uh, production and importing 80% of our coffee, coffee uh, uh, requirements. So there is a, a, a demand that has to be filled, and it can be filled by establishing industry clusters. Of course, we would have to work. That's a problem, you know. Uh, while we are looking at coffee as a, a single value chain, the production of coffee we would have to coordinate with the Department of Agriculture. Uh, so I hope, you know, there could be an arrangement where DPI would be left responsible for crops that are not uh, either corn or, 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 uh, or rice, you know, so we can uh, produce, we can take care of uh, the processing of this, uh, of this crops. I'm talking of cacao, I'm talking of uh, uh, coffee, I'm talking of uh, uh, bamboo, I'm talking of uh, fiber, you know, these are agricultural products, but they can stand for their processing to meet domestic demand and also be able to tap the export market. Uh, and I hope, you know, uh, uh, well, either we get full cooperation from uh, the Department of Agriculture or we, we have, or we will go ahead and even take care of, uh, of uh, farmers in, in producing these crops or improving the quality of these agricultural uh, products. Thank you, Sir Chairman. Uh, uh, well, okay, coffee and cacao, perhaps there's a potential there. Can I ask the team if we have figures on per capita income of our exports, exporters or workers working in uh, export industries? Do we have those figures for the last 10 to 15 years? I'd like to track the growth if there has been any. Do we have? Yes, if I what are our main if, if you don't have it, maybe someone can just retrieve it uh, for the last 10, 20 years because that, that's a key. If we really know if we're on the right track to producing uh, higher paying jobs and higher paying industries, no? Uh, yeah. And to know if we're on the right track because if, if the data shows we are not, then we have to reverse track at some point, Diba. Right? The chairman, the biggest uh, sector uh, for our export product is uh, electronics. Yes, but are they high-income electronics, uh, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Chairman? Because a lot of the export natin, mga semiconductors usually, yan, which come back in the form of higher-priced uh, items. 
So oh. is there a figure? I'm, I'm talking about incomes here, not just the uh, macro figures. I'm, I'm drilling down on the incomes. Because uh, I, I, my concern is jobs and incomes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Kaya yung tanong ko is very specific data pertaining to incomes of people working in export industries. We, we don't have the specific data at the moment, but yeah. given that these uh, export industries require skilled workers, I would, uh, it would be, I think, not uh, a bad uh, assumption to say that uh, they are better paying jobs, you know, than construction workers. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see more of that, uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. Secretary, going forward. So could I, re could I ask, request that data on the incomes of our uh, exporters, whether it's manufacturing or agriculture, maybe, well, at least the data that is within the purview of the uh, DTI, no? Because I realize uh, yung mga agricultural data, baka wala nga sa kanila yon yung... Uh, but with regards to um, our exports, I think we would we would probably have that data, no? Because you can, uh, you can at least extract it from the uh, amount of exports divided by the number of uh, people working in those uh, industries at the very least. No, someone can do those calculations, Mr. Chair. So we'd like to request that, please. Yeah, we will provide uh, data on the manufactured products. On the agricultural products, uh, well, since they're not uh, under the products are not going uh, manufacturing operations, I imagine that uh, these are being, they're being uh, wages there will be the same level as the incomes of our farmers. Uh, well, not necessarily, Mr. Chair, because uh, if you're talking about things like um, processed mangoes, diba? I mean, you're maybe those. How can is there a way of tracking how um, how the incomes have fared uh, in the mango industry? Since we're now we're doing a lot more processing, a lot more value adding, then I think there's a need to track all of those all of those things per industry, eh, diba? Uh, then then you know. You're on the right track if your per capita income per industry is increasing. Yeah, when I say manufactured manufactured product, I'm, I'm including uh, processed food products. Uh, if you are uh, selling say like uh, uh, bananas, you know, I don't know I'm, what the wages of, of the farm workers of banana plantation, but they will not be as much as the wages of uh, those in processing or manufacturing enterprises. But we will dig up the data, Mr. Chairman, and we will uh, submit accordingly to uh, Senator Ungara. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And I guess the next question is uh, with respect to new legislation like CREATE, which we passed uh, in 2019, and that's supposed to help drive our investments. Um, and the DTI is the co-chair of the uh, FIRB or the crucial body, no? the Fiscal Incentives Review Board. Uh, could we get a classification? Because it was mentioned during the Ways and Means hearing that around 400 billion in pledges or investments have been made since the CREATE law was. I don't know if that's the correct figure, but that was the figure given by uh, USEC Juvi uh, Dan Danof Danofrita. Danofria. And uh, so I'd like see where the breakdown of that investment is because the idea of create was to have more targeted investments uh, that would be strategic in nature, meaning they would, rather than uh, we just welcome, roll out the red carpet to all investors, the change in paradigm or the paradigm shift in our uh, investment policy was we're supposed to attract those who will help us and help our local industries. Diba yun ang uh, tama ba yun, uh, Yusek Perry? Na, Diba? We will have more targeted yung word na ginagamit ni Secretary Sani nung araw at Secretary Mon. Eh, diba? More targeted incentives. So are we now uh, implementing that more targeted approach? Meaning we're targeting uh, this particular investor because we believe it will help that particular local industry. Is that approach being followed right now, Yusek Perry? Mr. Chair. Uh -huh. Uh, yes, yes, Senator, we are following that approach and we will provide uh, data on the background of the uh, different uh, investment pledges that have come in since the create. But I do confirm, uh, Mr. Chair and Mr. Senator, uh, there are about uh, 
14 uh, projects that have been approved by the FIRB. And if I remember correctly, Senator Paramen uh, Dito would be on uh, Telco Towers. Uh, tapos so yung uh, meron isang malaking uh, provider of telecom services, yung Converge. Tapos meron po mga tatlong uh, cement. Uh, uh, mga ganun, at tapos pa, subway, so infrastructure. Yung mga ganun po yung mga pumasok. Yung mga nasa GDC po natin, mga electronics, normally they don't, they, they don't uh, cross that 1 billion uh, peso threshold. Pero may mga ganun din pumasok. Thank you, Senator. But you will provide that data. Yeah. I remember seeing Senator Pia. I see her on the screen. She asked for a separate presentation, remember, Senator, on uh, Senator Pia. So maybe we can include the DTI and make it an interagency presentation because we want to see if the law, is, uh, the law which uh, was painstakingly crafted by Senator Pia with uh, many inputs from the senators uh, is really being implemented well. Because talagang... Uh, if it's implemented well, I think it can be a very powerful tool to help develop our local industries as well. Pero kailangan nga may target, may bullseye tayo, eh, di ba? Kasi kung, kung uh, uh, shotgun approach tayo like before, baka hindi maunahan nga tayo ng, uh, well, it's already happening, no? By Vietnam and Indonesia and all of these other uh, countries who have attracted uh, so much foreign investment. So I, I guess my last question, Mr. Chair, is I think more or less the DTI knows where we're coming from. Uh, we're trying to strengthen our local industries, move up the value chain, increase jobs and incomes. I think that's really the bottom line for any uh, any government. no. Uh, but we've been not too focused on this, but but it's time, I think, to, to have a more laser-like focus on, on these very important issues which really affect Issue ng bituka nga talaga to eh, sa ating mga kababayan. So my next question is, is the DTI taking steps to talk to our private sector partners? Because the president mentioned in his inaugural, in his SONA, that he would like the, pri the public sector or the government to be the partner of the private sector. And I think the DTI can play that unique role because you can talk to industries and say, okay, how do we move up and produce more sophisticated offerings? Uh, how do we move into product spaces that are not being occupied but are adjacent product spaces to current product spaces being occupied already by Philippine companies? So are there steps being taken in this direction, Mr. Chair, Mr. Secretary? Mr. Chair, very much so. In fact, uh, I've been uh, giving uh, talks to industry groups. Last week, I uh, had a session with the American Chamber of Commerce uh, even uh, in my early uh, assumption of duty, I had a session with the uh, Italian uh, uh, business group that was holding a uh, conference in Kuala Lumpur, and I delivered an online uh, talk uh, message to them. Uh, this afternoon, I'll be uh, giving a talk to the joint uh, chambers of commerce, uh, mainly coming from uh, Europe, led by the British Chamber of Commerce and uh, the European Chamber, <clears throat> the EU Chamber of Commerce. So that, that's happening, plus individual talks. I had a long session with uh, uh, the CEO of Sam Samsung, who flew over from uh, Tokyo to meet with us, uh, and, and we exchanged views on uh, how we can make sure that uh, these expansion uh, projects uh, will, will help us, and, but at the same time, how we can support these uh, plans for expansion. Uh, there are such uh, very proactive uh, efforts that uh, we are taking uh, in order to uh, pull in uh, investors. And in fact, in, in our internal discussions, we're saying uh, we will have to change the approach. We will now be approaching uh, prospective investors rather than just waiting for the fruit to fall from the tree. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm very encouraged and congratulations to uh, Secretary Fred for uh, having these meetings. But I was hoping he would also meet with our domestic uh, producers because when I was referring to uh, uh, meetings with the, the private sector, I was referring to some of our domestic industries yes. to ask them uh, why aren't they occupying maybe more higher producing uh, product spaces? 
and uh, of course they will say na may medyo kulang tayo sa maybe sa uh, skilled manpower or uh, uh, technology or or partners It's those those kinds of things no but I think maybe there should be a, a push from uh, the department in this respect and uh, uh, so far I'm very encouraged by the answers given by our good secretary and his team uh, he has a good team there the the career uh, DTI people are quite good. Uh, I, we're definitely going to support them. I think going forward, we've we've been very supportive in the past few years and uh, very encouraging who you mga presentations. Given the short time that uh, the secretary has been in his post, so we'll, we'd like to give him the support that he needs. But but definitely, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Chair, please look in this direction of uh, having more higher paying jobs uh, and higher higher value products because uh, I think. Uh, we've been at I, I, you see our uh, GDP per capita has been increasing, but very incrementally. I think if we're looking for more dramatic increases, we need to make changes in this direction. So yun lang po. Uh, be assured of our support, uh, Secretary Fred, uh, and to your team. Salamat, Mr. Chair, for the time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just quickly, I'm sorry I overlooked the fact, you know, that uh, we also very closely with our domestic investors. I have already met with the uh, big business the, the, uh, in a meeting with the Pakati Business Club. Uh, I've met with uh, the, my former uh, organization, Management Association of the Philippines, uh, which has uh, the top uh, uh, executives of uh, large business, business companies. I've met with the food manufacturers uh, in, in one session. Uh, I talked with the pharma industry, both uh, uh, multinationals and, and local pharma companies. I've met with the logistics uh, companies because they're the ones that are moving the products uh, of our uh, uh, companies to bring them to the end users and, and consumers. But there are issues there that is uh, also being big obstacles, you know, to uh, the smooth pursuit of commerce in the country. Uh, in fact, in one cabinet meeting, I highlighted the fact, you know, because of these issues with uh, moving products from farm gates to end users uh, and the preponderance of middlemen along the line, uh, a farm uh, output can uh, increase in price by as much as five to eight times uh, because of this, uh, there are issues along the way. Uh, and they're being addressed now uh, since after I highlighted it in a uh, recent cabinet meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I see um, Senator Pia has her hand raised. I'd like to recognize Senator Pia. Thank you. Senator thank you. Gaetano. I'm always, yeah, I'm always inspired when uh, Senator Angara, um takes the floor. Uh, he, 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 well, because we've had lengthy discussions on these issues, um, uh, I, I'm reminded of, of some issues that we took up. No? And um, because we have the two chairmen here, can we, can we get a commitment that we can get a hearing uh, on updates on create um, between the committee chair of trade and the committee chair of ways and means? I leave it up to the two gentlemen to facilitate this uh, hearing for us so that we can get a comprehensive picture of where we are. Uh, gentlemen, I see the resource person is to the two gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, back to my questions. Um, uh, again, I'll, I'll use an example not in the health field because it's the area that I'm, you know, really most uh, knowledgeable about. Um, uh, the two gentlemen who were with me in the previous Congress, you will recall that our colleague, Senator um, Recto, no, would always uh, uh, explain and um, you know spread to the records the different roles of the various um, uh, industries, no, and he would explain how manufacturing uh, create manufacturing the manufacturing sector has a double the manufacturing sector involved in. Um, uh, products that are for local consumption as, as like a double purpose. No? Not only does it create employment, but it creates um, uh, it, it produces goods that are consumed in the in the country. Um, so, Mr. Secretary and, and Mr. Chairman, I'm directing my my, my ideas and uh, comments now to the Secretary. 
um, I'd like to propose this, to have the same mindset, because I'm pretty sure the Department of Trade has that mindset already, but I'd like to have the same mindset uh, in the in the sector of health. So if you were to meet with um, with uh, even even small hospital owners, and there's a lot of them, and they, they were hit hard and they, they contributed to the survival of our, uh, to our or literally our survival during the, the during the pandemic, you know, the height of the pandemic. Um, how can you support this industry? That by, by simply giving them minimal support, they will not just create jobs, but they will give back by way of better delivery of health service. So example, you know, that, 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 may be, that may seem quite general. Example, um, we all know of uh, we may all have friends. I, I think my generation might have been one of the highest. I don't know the exact numbers of um, of uh, health professionals that that um, got jobs abroad. And then a few years ago, when I was when I first became a senator, um, I heard of stories where they came back and tried to invest in their own provinces, but no facilities. So these are highly trained, highly skilled um, health professionals who could not practice in their own country, in their own countries, so in rural development, which is a constitutional mandate, no? They could not practice because walang support, no? And din manila kaya on their own, magpatayo ng hospital. Um, so that's something, Mr. Secretary, that I'd like you to look into. Because when you think of Vietnam and Thailand, they literally create the environment for growth. So if you agree with me that investing in health is win-win, not only do you create the jobs and the investment that you want, but it gives back because the products do not export the product. The health out the outcome of health investment is better health for the Filipinos. Then shouldn't this be an area that and I know it's in your targets, okay? But what I'm saying is, do you agree? Is it even possible to have a specific team that is committed to 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 this? Because I I can't other than manufacturing of locally consumed products. I can't think of any other industry that gives back in this magnitude. Mr. Chairman, the, the way I understand the question is whether DPI can support uh, healthcare workers, particularly medical uh, practitioners in, in uh, providing service to the community. Is that the really thrust of the no, question. No, Your Honor. Um, I, was, I was. I was. No, what I was trying to pick, what I was trying to illustrate is the similarities between manufacturing of commodities that are locally consumed and the health industry. So when we support, when we provide incentives and support um, manufacturing for domestic products, if we can support the health industry, so I'm not talking about health workers only, I'm talking about the health industry such that we can improve our health system by providing, by providing an environment that allows us to grow uh, specialty hospitals, basic health care all over the country. Because another example I gave you is the, hindi makauwi sa probinsya yung mga doktor because wala namang facilities. So that's the challenge. Can we create an environment where we support the growth of that industry and that industry not just provides employment because it's not just a doctor, it's a whole system that runs a hospital, but then also um, takes care of the health needs of the country and the health technology that you're looking for can also come into play. So that's what I'm saying, that, that bigger idea of how you can really support an environment for the development of the health industry. And for your purposes as an industry, for my purposes, it's the delivery of healthcare that I'm looking for, but also that environment that allows, it also, it also addresses the brain drain of, in our health sector. Um, for the information of the DTI family, um, Congress passed the Doctor Para Sabayan Act a few years ago, and I've been funding. I I uh, I oversee the, I, I chair the subcommittee um, of the Committee on Finance headed by Secretary Andara. I handle the budget 
of health and education. So we fund the schools that will uh, that, that, that will that will educate the future doctors. But there are regions that don't have these schools because they don't have a training hospital. So if you will encourage the funding, whether Siguros on your end, it's also private private funding, uh, investors that would come in, then we can have med schools, we can have the centers, and we will have a healthier Filipino because there will be doctors and health workers that can take care of them. So that's the bigger picture that I'm trying to, it, it wasn't about just uh, um, health, health, uh, health, uh, health personnel, uh, Mr. Secretary. I'd like to call on you, Sec. Perry, to apprise us on the incentives available for investments in healthcare facilities. Yes, and thank you, Secretary. And, uh, um, if I, if I may, sorry, if I may interrupt, no, I, I don't want to waste this committee's time by asking them for the, those incentives. No, my question is, are you willing to create that environment, and are you going after it? Ms. sinabi nga ni, ni Senator Angara, kaya nga ay started my statement na inspired ako kay Senator Angara. Are you including that as your key investment areas? Are you going after that? Because if you're not, then I'm going to go on and try to convince you that you should. So I don't just want to know what the incentives are. I want to know if you're going after it. Are, are you looking for partners who will build this environment? Are you creating that environment? Will you support the incentives? But I don't need a, I don't need, I don't need a list of incentives. Yes, Senator, it's, it's, I will not enumerate the incentives as I know that you are very much aware of the what are the incentives. But just just to share share with you, I'm sure you know that under the SIPP, sinama ko natin sa tier two ang uh, health related activities that would include manufacturing and services. So meron mo sila mas matas na incentive. Tapos so as was mentioned by you, Sekita, earlier, and you you have seen. Yung uh, health and life sciences, uh, kasama ko sila dun sa mga pinopromote natin. So on two sides, both the incentives and on the promotional side, uh, we are putting great importance on uh, health and health-related uh, activities. And we are, of course, very much looking to work with you, Senator. But, but my worry is, by listening to your response, with all due respect, you're just enumerating what those incentives are. I'm asking you, if you're going after it, are you looking for for potential investors? What countries have you been to? Have you looked at the technology in Japan, in, in the US, or in European countries? That's what I want to hear. Well, yes. So if the answer is no, if the answer is not yet, then then is it something you want to talk about and get back to me, diba? Do you need help? Diba? Is, is, it, is it part of the... I, I mean, I saw in your list... Um, aeronautics, okay sa akin lahat yun. Pero yung health nga, double nga yun eh. You bring in the investment, you provide jobs, and then you make the Philippines healthier. So for me, it's often overlooked. And I wanted to bring this to your attention and to find out if you haven't pursued it, then are you game to pursue it? Yes, we have to ask. Sure, sure. Uh, we have that uh, delicacy is part of our Strategic, strategic plan for 2022-2028, you know, which is starting now. Uh, there are three pillars, and the third pillar, I mean, the third cluster of, uh, of industries is the health and life sciences sec, uh, cluster. And under that, we have uh, medical uh, healthcare services and uh, various uh, health products. Uh, this will require investments from domestic investors as well as uh, foreign investors. Yes, we intend to pursue investments in uh, healthcare facilities, uh, but we have not, I don't, I don't, I don't know whether uh, my colleagues have done it before my time. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's part of the plan that I would like to pursue for the coming uh, few years that I'll be here. Thank you. I'm happy to hear that. And as if, if you were listening carefully, I mean, when I say you, the whole team, I mentioned like meetings with small hospital owners to find out what they need, what kind, maybe they are ripe for investment opportunities. Uh, what what kind of how you know? Point is, Secretary, I think it's on you, on your team, to create that environment. So that's really what I'm bringing up. No, 
how to create that environment that that uh, is conducive to health care investments. Yes, for, other, for, our for, friends, for foreign investors and for local investors. I hope our friends from the Department of Health, you know, uh, will not take this uh, negatively. We did so. Lucita? What? Not take what? Can I hear that? What What was that statement supposed to be? Well, I hope they will be supportive. Uh, positive way of putting. Oh, let me know. Let me know if they're not, because I that that's precisely the gap that I. Yet, you know, to coordinate with. Sorry, I, I can't hear you. Can you repeat that? We don't have a secretary of health to coordinate with. Yes, yes, yeah. But anyway. You see, Pita, do you want to say something? You have, there's an OIC. There's an OIC. So until the secretary is there, you should talk to the OIC. Anyway, and what I'm trying to share here, uh, Mr. Chairman, is this story is not new to me. Hindi talaga nag-uusap ang mga agencies about it. Uh, in previous hearings, and let me just also say this for the record, because DPI's mandate includes employment generation, is it not correct, Secretary? Diba? Employment generation. And so I, I need to say it here that um, uh, we will never have enough nurses to take care of ourselves in this lifetime with even at, at the current rate and even with some push because it is just more attractive to them to go abroad. Now, you might say, this is not on you because that's on the health sector. Yeah, it's not that if the health sector is look out, but in terms of employment generation, I think it involves you in in terms of um finding out how how the demand for our nurses affect our supply, uh, our human health resource supply here. It also affects DPI, your honor. So that's why I would like this committee to ensure that these agencies all work together. Um, because they're all interrelated, Your Honor. Decent, decent economies and economic growth will rely on a healthy Filipinos, uh, unhealthy Filipinos. And if we cannot take care of them, then that's a vicious cycle. So that's what that's all I'm saying. Na may role on DPI, John. And if you're telling me that uh, you will not get, uh, at least you don't have the support, or you're worried about the support from DOH, then let me know. I'll, I'll help in any way I can. Mr. Chairman, we hear the uh, senator on, on her views and we will act accordingly uh, and attend to the employment aspect also in the healthcare sector. Yes, but I'll repeat again, Mr. Chairman, and that's part of a holist my holistic approach to healthcare being a viable um, trade uh, industry that we can that we should support it's not just the health it's not just the human health it was the last thing i mentioned but again i'll end with wanting the assurance that it will be looked at as a whole industry that can contribute to economic growth in the country that's my point there thank you uh you see peter i think wants to add something Yes, uh, yes, sir. Uh, just very quickly, Your Honor. Uh, as we've mentioned, our uh, industrialization strategy is really pushing for the adoption of new technologies, and we are uh, creating the environment that would uh, allow the growth and development of uh, digital health products uh, and services. Um, considering, uh, Mr. Chair, that uh, there is really a lack of uh, hospitals, for instance, across the different areas in the country. We're looking into uh, building the environment that would allow or bring in the adoptions of, uh, for example, therapeutic systems addressing chronic diseases, the application of telemedicine solutions, and uh, AI-assisted diagnosis. Para po, uh, accounting experts natin in various areas, makatulong dun sa mga pasyente na hindi naman makagating dito sa ano dito sa Maynila. That's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Senator.
Kahit ano, and um, without any further comments, if there's, I see there's no other uh, senators who are uh, expressing interest to talk. Uh, I think we've covered a lot of ground today. And I would like to convey our heartfelt uh, gratitude to our invited resource persons for your significant help in fine-tuning, in helping with our legislative proposals. So uh, at this point, again, I'd like to thank um, uh, Secretary Pasqual and the whole DTI uh, for, for joining us today. And I'd like to instruct the, the Secretariat to please uh, follow up these, uh, the request for information uh, that earlier we discussed regarding inflation numbers that uh, were discussed earlier. And please, uh, we'll remind about the assistance as requested by Senator Tulfo. And of course, uh, the information requested by uh, Senator Angara. So we will follow this up. And uh, please, uh, as soon as we receive it, uh, please uh, I instruct the Secretariat to send this information, to disseminate this information to all the members. Um, Again, thank you very much to all my colleagues for uh, for engaging in this uh, first first committee hearing. And uh, I'd also like to instruct if we can the um, all our stakeholders to please submit your position papers regarding the regarding the Internet Transactions Act, so that during the next meeting we'll be able to discuss further and at, at length the provisions for the the law. So uh, at this point, uh, we are entertaining any um, any motions for uh, adjournment. Move to adjourn, Mr. Chair. Yes, there's a motion to adjourn. Uh, motion to adjourn. There be no objections. That motion is approved. Uh, thank you again. Thank you so much, and uh, we will see you at the next hearing.